anyway. All right, at the box office this weekend, and uh, because my prep is garbage nowadays, we only have the top five. <laughs> Of the top That's ten. all you really need. Uh, Kung Fu Panda 4 dominated the box office with 58.3 million debut, marking the franchise's biggest opening since the original film in 2008. Uh, Dune Part 2 held strong in its second week, earning 46 million and totaling 157 million domestically after 10 days. That's, that's Fantastic. Yep. Uh, Imaginary, the movie about the woman tormented by her old teddy bear, uh, that landed on track with expectations in third place. Uh, the drama Cabrini was in fourth place with $7.7 million, And Bob Marley, One Love, rounded out the top five with another $4 million. So that was the activity of the box office. And of course, speaking of movies, it's all about the Oscars last yes. night. Yes. Uh, it was a um, apparently uh, a big, big showing for, and not surprisingly, um, Oppenheimer. And uh, I've got the rundown of uh, Oscars won by film. So I'll go movie by movie and tell you what all they won. It was the top winner taking home seven Oscars, including Best Picture. It was sort of on track for that. Yeah, so uh, they won Best Picture, Best Directing, Best Actor for Killian Murphy, Best Supporting Actor for Robert Downey Jr., Best Cinematography, and Best Original Score. Um, and I'm happy that uh, that Robert Downey Jr. Jr. won that. There were a lot of great people who were up for that particular. He's tremendous, one and he was he's that, so good. That was the best of his career. I I've mean, and, and he knows it, and he makes reference to that. Like he needed that role. But he is a uh, he's a great actor. We know that. But when you sat and watched him at the Academy Awards last night, he is Tony Stark. Yeah. He is so Tony Stark. Yeah. Uh, I didn't see it anywhere else, so I could be wrong, but I thought that, because, uh, you know, they have all the pictures on the screen. I think Robert De Niro thought he won because they said Robert... And his he got this huge smile. And Stop he didn't it. he didn't smile the entire, really when they were like presenting him and they they were, you know, honoring him, he didn't really smile. He was like very serious looking at them. And then when they said Robert, he got this big smile and then it was like Downey Jr. And I just I was wow. watching him. I, I didn't see it anywhere else. I could be wrong. Maybe he was just smiling. I didn't happy see for that, his... but I, that would be hilarious if <laughs> it know, was. It's actually happened once before where it actually legitimately happened. Everyone was expecting Richard Dreyfus, uh, Richard Burton to win for Equus one year, and Richard Dreyfus won for the Goodbye Girl. And like Burton was like, here we go! Oh, God. <laughs> it wow. didn't quite happen, yeah. Wow. Uh, we'll play some of the acceptance uh, speeches and stuff here and, and uh, clips, and we'll also run down how the evening went uh, in a moment, but I'll just tell you who won what to start with. Uh, Poor Things had four wins. Uh, so Emma Stone won for her second Oscar for Best Actress. Uh, well, the film also achieved craft awards for best costume design, best production design, and best makeup and hairstyling. Uh, the Zone of Interest got two wins. It won for international feature film and best sound. I watched that over the weekend. It's pretty amazing. What's it about? It is about this uh, this uh, death camp. The, you know, uh, during World War II, a, uh, a concentration camp, and the family, the Nazis, uh, Nazi who runs it, and his family live right adjacent. To the death camp, and there's this wall that keeps them protected from at least the family. So the kids are kind of unaware of what's going on just over the wall. So that when dad, and it's a true story, when daddy goes to work, wow. he's going to a death camp. Wow. Um, Barbie only grabbed one win. Uh, it was the biggest hit of 2023, and it just snagged one Oscar, and it was a Billie Eilish's collaboration with her brother Phineas. Uh, for best original song, the odds were good in the category because uh, the film also had another nomination with I'm Just Ken, which was, of course, sung by Ryan Gosling. And uh, there was a performance of that last night. I think it could have won more awards. But I, when I was watching, at least when, when they were doing some of the, the awards for it, I thought what it was up against. I'm like, there's no way they can let Barbie win. Do you know what I mean? I know you're saying. saying it didn't Listen, have the gravitas I, of like an Oppenheimer. Yes. Like yeah. how how could the the actors from Barbie be right. Oppenheimer? Uh, right. Especially when you're up against very uh, and what everyone is probably uh, those who have seen it. I have not, but Emma Stone's performance is supposed to be so amazing. Right. Um, yeah. No, I, I understand what you're saying. I saw Barbie. I didn't. I thought it was good, but I didn't make a big stink about it the way everybody else I agree. did on yeah. a personal level. It's a That's fun just movie. How it affected me, but everybody was talking about how. All this gravity that it had, I'm like, okay, yeah, I get the message and everything, and it's a good message, but I just didn't, 
it didn't blow and me I away think, like everybody else but did. And I think that's the reason, because not everybody felt that that way. Not everybody was... And, yeah. and that's with any movie, but I just sure. thought the whole concept behind Barbie couldn't have you know, beaten other movies but there were, were, up, there were more impactful movies. There were delineations. Um, uh, there was no nomination for I'm Just Oppenheimer. That <laughs> song, yeah. <laughs> right? I think it was groundbreaking, but it just wasn't more... It wasn't better than everything else. I gotcha. So uh, it did, but it just won for the song, uh, which was kind of interesting. By now, the, why the Just Ken performance was hilarious. All right, we're going to get to all that in a little bit. So the Holdovers got one win, and locally, Divine Joy Randolph. Yay! Became a first time Oscar winner with her role as Grieving School Cafeteria Cook Mary. So congratulations to her and her family and everybody that's in town. They, they had uh, they, people were viewing it at a it movie great. theater. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Uh, American Fiction had one win. It had received six Oscar nominations. It ended up with one for Best Writing for Adapted Screenplay. It deserves it. It's, a, it's actually a very funny movie. Uh, Anatomy of a Fall had one win for Best Original Screenplay. Uh, the Wonderful Story of Henry Sugar got one win, and that was Best Live Action Short Film. Uh, the Boy and the Heron had one win, and that got the Best Animated Feature. Yeah. Uh, Godzilla Minus One had one win for Best Visual Effects. Uh, 20 Days in Maripol had one win with Best Documentary Feature. Uh, War is Over, inspired by the music of John and Yoko, uh, had a win, and that was uh, for Best Animated Short Film. It was co-written by Sean Lennon. Who, who got up there. on stage, yeah. Yep. And the last repair shop had one win, and that got best documentary short film. So we have uh, a few clips to play, yes, as well. So let me see what you we want have to start here. with a, a joke from the monologue. Kim? Yeah, I yeah. think you did pretty good. All right, the length of the movies. Yes. All right, let's go with that. Here we there go. There were so many great movies that held audiences captive this year, and I mean that literally. Your movies were too long this year. <laughs> The average length of the top 10 movies was two hours and 23 minutes. That's up 30 minutes from three years ago. When I went to see Killers of the Flower Moon, I had my mail forwarded to the theater. He's right, though. Killers of the Flower Moon is so long, in the time it takes you to watch it, you could drive to Oklahoma and solve the murders yourself. <laughs> the average length of a movie, I think about 10 years ago, was about 110 minutes. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. I remember you would count on about an hour and a half. Yeah, and yeah. And then, you know, you'd add in an extra 20 minutes where if you were going to the theater show sure. for trailers and things like that. But it was generally about an hour and a half. Right. Roughly two hours for the whole experience. But now... <laughs> With the I, when I went to see Dune uh, two recently, and that movie is two hours and forty five minutes long. It was easily twenty five minutes of pre roll going into it. And I'm like, I'm gonna be here all day, Enough. man. <laughs> Enough. Yeah. Kimmel did have a funny joke about that because they started the show an hour early. Yes. So about ninety minutes in, he uh, made mention that anybody that was just joining, um, it was similar to like going to a movie theater, and the movie would just be starting. Right. <laughs> I did catch that. And by the way, I forgot about the early time. Oh, no. And he had been. I, I, I saw interviews with Kimmel saying people are going to miss. They're going to miss a monologue. They're just not used to this time. And sure yep. enough, I, I'm Total, like, same. oh yeah, the Oscars are on. So, so I was Absolutely. acute. Missed it. I was acutely aware aware of it and even I but just because of ritual because of everything changing I sat down and okay I'm gonna watch the red carpet and the Oscars start up and I'm like oh yeah right all right so uh there was a funny moment with John Cena right he they, they he uh, he called back to the famous uh, scene uh years ago the Oscars 50 years ago David Niven was on stage and a streaker when streaking was all the rage yep. ran uh, by him and so he leads into this this was my favorite part right. of the entire night. I couldn't believe that they actually did it. Here we go. Can you imagine if a new man ran across the stage today? I said, can you imagine if a new man ran across the stage today? Wouldn't that be crazy? Jimmy. And then uh, he's being called to the side of the stage. Right, John there's, like a stage. there's like a half wall, right, so you yeah. can see that he fr is, you know, naked, at least from the waist up. <laughs> yep, and it's John Cena. What? <laughs> Excuse me for a second. What's going on? You're supposed to run across the stage. I uh, changed my mind. I don't want to do the streaker bit anymore. <laughs> what do you mean you don't want to do the streaker bit anymore? We're doing it. I just don't feel right about it. Man, this is, it's an elegant event. You know, honestly, you should feel shame right now for suggesting such a tasteless idea. Oh, it's supposed to be funny. 
The male body is not a joke. Mine is. <laughs> <laughs> and it, was, it was solid. And when he he executed it well, I, I, he had to have some sort of pouch or something on, but he looked pretty naked behind the uh I mean, you the could card. see, like, yeah. you could see the, the muscle yeah, lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they went way down. Like, way he down. shaved his pubes. Yeah. Way that down. Way. That's had, how much you could see. He That's how far down he And shaved. I thought it was hilarious that he was presenting costume. Yeah, and then, and then, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, of course. That was perfect. And then when when he said, uh, he goes, he goes, will you? Jimmy Kimmel goes, will you practically wrestle naked? He goes, I wear jorts. He goes, that's worse. <laughs> that <laughs> nice. All right, and then uh, we have some acceptance speeches. Let's go with uh, Robert Downey Jr., best supporting actor. Yeah, and uh, great, he certainly deserved it. He was amazing in this role. So here's a little snippet of that. I'd like to thank my terrible childhood <laughs> and the Academy in that order. <laughs> My entertainment lawyer, Tom Hansen of 40 years, the half of which he spent trying to get me insured and no. bailing me out of the Hooskow. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Um, he kept it very, very light. There was there was no heavy emotion in his, uh, other than thanking his wife. And, started yeah. with that immediately because yeah. she really, and everyone credits her with saving his life. Yeah. But um, yeah, and uh, man, he, he looks great and he's on top of the world now. Yeah. What was the what was he talking about with the animals? He's, he mentioned something about animals. Oh, they, live, they basically live on a farm in yeah. Malibu. And so uh, she helps like uh, wrangle the animals and take care of oh. them and stuff. So when he referred to her as his veterinarian, she actually does a lot of that animal care at the uh, at their farm. And he also made a plug. He said that uh, he was a rescue animal That's himself, right. and that she had uh, <laughs> yeah. loved him oh, back right, okay. to life. So, <laughs> all right, all right. which he definitely was, man. Dude was in bad, yes, bad in a bad way. Um, Emma Stone had a little dress problem as she came up to accept her award. Her the back of her dress like ripped open. It was a malfunction. Now they thought she was a potential win, but the the uh, the money was not on her, so she was legitimately shocked. Who who was uh, uh, Lily Gladstone? Uh, yes, Lily okay. Gladstone. So here is uh, her winning. Oh boy, um, my dress is broken. <laughs> I think it happened during I'm Just Ken. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Oh boy, this is really, this is really overwhelming. Sorry, I, mm, okay. Uh, um, um, I don't know what I'm saying. Oh my God, I'm totally, okay. Uh, the other night I was panicking, as you can kind of see, happens a lot, um, that maybe something like this could happen. And, and Yorgos said to me, please take yourself out of it. And he was right, because it's not about me. It's about a team that came together to make something greater than the sum of its parts. I need to see that Aww. movie. Uh, she's great. I, I I love her. I like her. She's she's a wonderful. Well, actress, yeah, so. and it's it's uh, it's one of the it's obviously has sort of a weird Frankenstein sort of plot to it, and every but everyone says it's uh, yeah. it's good. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, she and she was referencing obviously the I'm just Ken was the performance from Ryan Gosling, and apparently there were sixty five dancing Kens uh, that were part of that slash. Yeah. Mark Ronson and Wolfgang Van Halen all got up and played guitar on stage with him. It's a big number, and he is super. I mean, the dude is super talented, and he pulled that off effortlessly. There's a, a photo when uh, Emma Stone goes up to speak, and like all of the women behind her, when she says, "My dress is broken," you can see all their faces, and like they're almost looking like, "Do you need help? Do you want to?" Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. It's a natural instinct. It's a pretty funny photo. Yep. Uh, and then the Best Picture nomination uh, was, well, they, they were about to read the nominees, and that didn't happen. Al Pacino, right? I think, I think there's, yeah, there was an issue with Pacino backstage or something, and, and nothing horrendous or was reported, right. but Kimmel had to stall a little bit, and then Pacino comes out. And I'm too tired. I'm going to jam it. Uh, he, he, <laughs> it's perfunctory to read the nominees. Uh, yes, ahead so, of time, right? Right, and, and so... He's going. Ah, maybe I'll do some, some, uh, you know, Shakespeare. Uh, He's you know why? You know why he didn't do it? It was too damn hard. <laughs> exactly. Wait, so I, I didn't see. It. So he didn't. He never he, read he the ne nominees. He opens up the end, and we'll have you hear the audio. We'll play the audio. He All just right, yeah. announces the winner. You'll hear it. Okay. Yeah. This is the time uh, for the last award of the evening, and it's uh, uh, my honor to present it. Uh, ten wonderful films. Uh, were nominated, but only one will take the award for Best Picture. So he's stalling. Is that what he's doing? It seems to be, or he's lost. Uh, I'm not finished. <laughs>
They, so, they brought them up throughout the night, you know, so like uh, coming back from commercials quite a bit, they would announce what the Best Picture nominees were, Steve. So maybe because they did that throughout the night, they didn't do that at, with Pacino at the end? I don't possibly. Know. And so there's, there's a question. In fact, it's uh, everyone's sort of asking that question. Was there? Was was he told to stall or to speed it up? But you always read the nominees before announcing the winner. Wow, this is such a crock of shit. <laughs> he was upset at that point. All right, here we go. And uh, I have to go to the envelope for that, and I will. Here it comes. <laughs> And Maria, I see Oppenheimer. Yes. yes. I mean, they're like, that's the announcement. Did we win? I think I see uh, Oppenheimer. Is that what he said? I think I see Oppenheimer? Yeah, there's a piece of paper here. Hey, Jimmy. I see Oppenheimer. I think I see Oppenheimer. Here it comes. Hang on. Jimmy. And Maria, I see Oppenheimer. And Murray, I see Oppenheimer. I don't know what the hell he's, he, he's he stumbling said, over something. My eyes see Oppenheimer. Is that what he says? Wait, I, play again. I don't think he says that. Hang on. And Murray, I see Oppenheimer. <laughs> Maybe he's trying to say trying that. Trying to yeah. say that. Murray, I see Oppenheimer. I see Oppenheimer. Oh my okay. gosh! Wow. How? Loppenheimer. <laughs> How like like it, anticlimactic? So, yes, yes. It, well, it's huge. It's hugely anticlimactic. It's it is the award of the it's evening. Gone. <laughs> uh yeah, and you know what? You know what? I'm not gonna read it. You know that's the one. That's the one. <laughs> yeah, you you. That's the one that you do correctly. That's and get not somebody the one that you mess up. And by the way, he has won an Oscar. Yeah. He's won a number of Oscars. It's amazing. You know how it goes. You know how you present, and you make it something special well, he's for a, the honoree. He's also a hundred. Like pick somebody else. Oh, did you see? <laughs> what was great was to look at De Niro sitting next to his baby mama. Yeah. You know, with that, va- with she looks like on? his Bayada nurse. Yeah, seriously, yeah. she does look like his caretaker. Wow. Um, didn't they announce the wrong film one year? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. it was La La Land. La La Land. Uh, they, right. It was incorrectly yeah, named the best picture of the year. It was not. Yeah, Moonlight was the actual winner. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, come on, folks. <laughs> <laughs> now, Warren Beatty, it was Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway, and they, um, they apparently there was sort of some screw up with the um, Price she- Waterhouse. Uh, that, that they appeared to have a, a reason for that, but he said, I don't know. I, I think it says Oppenheimer. Wow. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Get off my back. That was incredibly anticlimactic. Go oh, on. man. Uh, but not too far off of uh, what everyone was expecting. You know? Yeah. Uh, that yeah. was, uh, was going to be the big winner, and uh, certainly that uh, ended up being the case. So there Christopher you go. Nolan's big win. Finally. Yep. And uh, they took home uh, seven of them, right? Yeah. Seven Oscars. Seven out of nine. Um, I think and they were a juggernaut, Killian Murphy for best actor. Yeah. And I, he deserved it. He was phenomenal. Yeah. He was he was incredible. Absolutely. So there you go. Uh, your Oscar breakdown. That's all we have time for. I'm uh, going to jump right to the clips, actually. You have to, man. Yeah. We'll cover some of the other entertainment stories tomorrow, probably, when we have time. Uh, but we're going to start with this. So this season of So You Think You Can Dance was shot and edited as a documentary style series to show who the dancers are away from the dance floor. And here, guest judge and former contestant Comfort Fadok explains the benefits of the change. Here we go. It's going to be based upon what it truly is to be a dance artist. Not only are you a good dancer, but are you someone who can you have a career as it? Can you can we hire you for a music video? Can we hire you for a Broadway? Can we hire you for the halftime show? Can we hire you for this film that's coming out? Like, are you the perfect person to be on my on my side so that I can, you know, rely on? I don't <laughs> give a f- I think that's how that you say her name. Long. Comfort for Doke. For Doke, F-E-D-O-K-E. Sure. I'm still working comfort. Uh, Fidoke, Fidoke. I used to love this show. Fidoke. I think I might go back and give it a try. Oh, yeah? At this point? Yeah, because, well, they changed the whole. They, I, I loved the original concept of the show, and they changed it. Um, and I, I did not like the change that they made. So I don't know what they're doing now, but I might go back and check it out. All right, all right. Here's the next clip. After confronting some of his long-held fears in season one, Emmy Award winner Eugene Levy steps out of his comfort zone once again. And in this clip, the reluctant traveler talks about his reluctant eating habits. I'm, I'm not a, an exotic fish 
eater. I, I sampled an oyster in uh, France, uh, not for long. It took maybe half a second before I had to spit it out. I couldn't take it. I tried haggis in Scotland. I didn't care for it at all. Yeah! Uh, the, the reluctant traveler <laughs> is streaming now on Apple TV+. He's Plus. Perfect for this. He's the best. All right, there you go. I could go to dinner with him. Entertainment report for you. Yeah, you, you guys would, him and I, yeah, yeah, yeah. You would agree on the same thing. What chicken do you yeah. have? Um, you know, we'll we'll have to cover the Razzies because those were over the weekend as well. That's a lot. We didn't have a chance to get to that because obviously we're, we're just uh, focusing on uh, the Oscars, but uh, we'll get into that stuff. Um, we have joining us guest wise, Mr. T. J. Miller on yeah. the program, and uh, Case is out today, so Marissa is filling in his shoes here in the studio, helping me out this morning and the next couple of days. We'll be joining him when we get to Florida on Thursday morning for the live broadcast from uh, Phil's Spring Training, and then at Coco's on Friday. Uh, but in the meantime, we're working our way through a Monday morning. Sun's working on waking uh, waking up because uh, obviously we had to switch the clocks back. So we're going to deal with that. But we get, uh, you noticed it yesterday. It yes. Nice and late. So nice. Uh, light out. So it was nice. Enjoyable. So uh, we're going to take a quick break. Come back in a moment. We'll dive into all of the Monday glory when we get back. So stay with us, please. Preston and Steve. On 93.7. Um, Traffic on 93.3 WMMR. All right, thank you, Kathy. We covered uh, the Oscars a little while ago. Oppenheimer, uh, the big winner of the evening. And uh, also a uh, local win, which was uh, pretty awesome for uh, Divine Joy Randolph for uh, the holdovers. Uh, so we went through all that stuff. But what we didn't get a chance to touch on, which was, the, of course, the day before, uh, the Oscars come out, the Razzies come out, and they announce those winners. Which have become uh, a big thing in their own right. Yeah. And sometimes the stars will show up for them. They will from time to time. I remember, I think maybe the first person to ever show up to actually get their award was Sandra Bullock. I think you're all right. about yeah. Steve. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And they, it like surprised the hell out of them. They, they, loved like, it. they had no idea and they thought it was amazing. Every now and then it does happen. But I generally, I usually don't see any of the movies that are on this list uh, or, you know, the, the the nominees. Very rarely do I see any of them. But. Well, sometimes also they, they uh, the way, you know, the, the way they reckon the categories are, uh, they're not quite right. I think, I think there's a specific kind of film that you nominate for a Razzie. It's yeah. one, you know, you don't take a movie that is obviously crap from the beginning. You take something that tried to swing for an Academy Award and failed miserably. Right. So worst picture went to Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. No, that's, that wasn't, it was supposed to be crap. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Was it? Well, it's, I didn't see it. So I, I saw no it. Yeah. Yeah. Surprisingly, it's crap. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the, the, the killer, Winnie the Pooh, is, does, is it very stiff movements in this yeah, character? Yeah. Okay, yeah. And, and it's um, it looks more like the classic illustration of Winnie the Pooh. It doesn't look like the Disney right. Winnie the Pooh. Okay. But it, it, it does the thing that movies of that ilk always make the mistake. They force trying to be a cult movie. Just let it be one naturally if it's going to be one. So it was up against uh, The Exorcist Believer, Expendables. Horrible. You saw it? Yeah, Exorcist Believer. Yeah, horrible. How about Expendables 4? No. You did not see, see that. I read the book. And then yeah. Meg 2, The Trench. Saw it. And? Horrible. All right. Oh, my God. <laughs> and Shazam Fury of the Gods. It's not horrible. It's I just, it's it. not up to the, the, and even Meg 2 is, is fun in parts, but, um, yeah, these are these are. I think you go for the the heavier budgeted movies. Mm -hmm. uh, so you maybe know. for twenty twenty five, Madam Web will uh, be up there. Oh, oh I yeah. guarantee you, that was one there where they were trying to make a good uh, Spider Man adjacent, you know, Marvel adjacent uh, type of a movie. Right, and and so Steve, maybe that sort of fits the bill a little bit. Yeah, more. do you know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean yeah. he's kind of elusive in trying to describe what what I think makes a good Razzie well, Award winner. I don't think the, uh, the I'm sorry, the uh, the Exorcist was trying to be a bad movie. No, no, right? no, yeah, he was so, trying to be a legitimate. I mean, when you the Winnie the Pooh movie, right? Uh, you know, I bet you're walking around the set going, "Oh, we, we clear a spot for our Razzie." Uh, for the worst actress, Razzie Megan Fox for Johnny and Clyde uh, won that. So. Is that the one that she did with Machine Gun Kelly? Don't know. Yeah, I know, I, it might very well be. I know very little of these. Uh, it was, she was up against Ana de Armas for Ghosted, uh, Salma Hayek in Magic Mike's Last Dance, Jennifer Lopez in uh, The Mother. And Helen Mirren in Shazam: Fury of the Gods. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't Helen Mirren's fault. Uh, did anybody see Anna Ghosted? Anna yeah, Anna it's Anna with Chris Evans. Yeah, yeah, and it's so sort of a, a reverse 
she's the spy who's very competent and a badass, and he's kind of the he he has a thing for her and doesn't realize that she has this other life. I think it was a direct to Netflix. Okay. Uh, well, coming up with worst actor was uh, John Voight in Mercy. Didn't, Not familiar. Didn't see it at no. all. No. Uh, he was up against uh, Russell Crowe in The Pope's Exorcist. Holy hell. Yeah. That horrible. Bad? Yeah. Horrible. What was that uh, about? Well, it's supposed to be based on an actual a priest who is known as the Pope's Exorcist. William Friedkin had done a documentary about him. But this, I don't know. You know, this movie, I don't know how it got made. Okay. And the way he's playing him is just horrible. So it looks like the poster for Satan's Alley from uh, <laughs> from Tropic Thunder. In life? Oh, Tropic yeah. Tropic Thunder. Yeah, the, the fake movie with Robert Downey Jr. and uh, Tobey Maguire. Uh, it was also up against uh, Vin Diesel in Fast X, uh, Chris Evans in Ghosted, and Jason, <laughs> Jason Statham in uh, the Meg 2, Meg 2, The Trench. <laughs> So the the victory went to John Voight for mercy. That's a t that's a tough. So those actually, I think, are that's a solid bill where they're you know you have some some names. Uh, we're supporting actress. Hey, she got a two for Megan Fox. Won that one as well for nice. Expendables Four. Yeah, yeah. I think her romantic interest interest in Expendables Four is in fact Jason Statham. Uh, she went. Uh, she was up against uh, Kim Cattrall for About My Father, uh, Bai Ling and Johnny and Clyde, Lucy Liu and Shazam: Fury of the Gods. And Mary Stuart Masterson. She was in Five Nights at Freddy's? Wow. Oh God. Okay, well, I didn't see it, so I don't know. But Mary Stuart Masterson. She's got some cred. Yeah, she does. Yeah. I haven't seen her in a long time, but she's, yeah. Wow. Okay. Worst supporting actor went to Sylvester Stallone for Expendables 4. He's in it, from what I understand, for like seven seconds. I believe, I believe he is the... They has been nominated the most for the Razzies. Oh, really? Yeah, to date, Sylvester. That's right, it sticks! He's been uh, awarded uh, the most, uh, he's been awarded the most actor ever with 12 Razzie Awards. Wow, he's happy about that. Ding, ding. <laughs> the worst, all right, so let me ask you, what do you believe the worst Stallone, and we adore Stallone, but what is the worst Sylvester Stallone movie? Oh, man, Over the Top is pretty damn bad. Because it has to be, for me, if you're going to judge, it has to be, it, it's just boring. And, on, like, for example, Cobra's horrible. So but I, did, I love I, it. I didn't see um, uh, Stop and My Mom Will Shoot. Horrible. So I can't, I can't, well, good, good Lord, Rhinestone is unbelievably <laughs> bad. But unbelievably bad. But is it, it so bad it's good? It gave us Drinkenstein. Drinkenstein. You know, yeah, we got that out of it. So Rocky. I think you might be right with. Um, wow. What about Rocky Five, guys? Ah, uh, it's just, it's so bad it's good. I think it's just bad. <laughs> no, it's bad, bad. <laughs> it's just pure bad. Although uh, we got the Rantlers out of Rocky Five. I know. Yeah, what what is it given the show? That's what we have to ask. Uh, man, he's got such a long list of movies, and and some just kind of came and went. Do you remember that racing movie that he did? It was oh, like yeah. a Formula One racing yeah. movie. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I don't I even drive really fast. I don't remember the name of that, but um, yeah, it's a good question, Steve. I'd have to do a deep dive. I would have to see a full list of his credits. Paradise uh, Alley's pretty bad too. What was that about? Ah, uh, it's the three brothers with Armando Santi, and there's a you know it's it's a uh, depression era, and he's kind of a um, a scammer. Oh wait a minute. But you created a monster, and they call me the exile. And the devil that is the lab I pour out. Where he makes his all the time. Oh my God! I can't believe it, like that was actually done. It yeah, was maybe. done. It was released by a major movie company with Dolly Parton. It had a pretty big cast. <laughs> yeah, I mean it was, it was pretty. Yeah. pretty <laughs> and yet, he, of course, he's done fantastic work. He has Copland. Yeah. He was Copland amazing. He's brilliant. Oh, daylight. Um, a daylight. Daylight is That's the one that takes place in the uh, the Holland yeah. Tunnel. I think it is. Yeah. yeah. You thought that was good. I, I mean, like over the top, it was just, it was entertaining. Okay. It can be entertaining. Stop or my mom will shoot is horrible, horrible. Like it's boring and, there was and that, not funny. Do you remember Oscar? Oscar's terrible. That's a bad movie. Yeah, where he's the sort of um, mob guy. Uh, mob guy. Uh, well. All right, so he is the most winning uh, actor in yeah. Razzie's history. 12 times. And continues his uh, streak. So congratulations, <laughs> Sylvester Stallone, for Expendable Fours. Uh, worst screen couple, and that award went to Pooh and Piglet. 
uh, as uh, bloodthirsty slash slasher killers in Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Uh, they were up against... If you, um, if you stop and think about it, the, the, the plot of Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey is the plot of Imaginary. They, they're, they're pissed off that Christopher Robin oh. didn't um, stay with them you okay. know, and keep them through adulthood. Wait, not imaginary. Or wait, yeah, I guess that yeah, is it, yeah. right? Yeah, right, yeah. The, the bear the is bear upset is that, pissed off. that uh, they the didn't get plot. Uh So the worst screen couple, the other nominees were any two Merciless Mercenaries Expendables 4, uh, any two money-grubbing investors who donated to the $400 million for the remake <laughs> rights to The Exorcist, uh, Anna de Armas and Chris Evans uh, ghosted from Ghosted, and then Salma Hayek and Channing Tatum in Mike's Magic Mike's Last Dance. Anybody see that movie? I did. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's to me, it's no better or no worse than the other Magic Mikes. Okay, you I know, did. I've never seen any of there's them. There's a yeah, <laughs> it is what it is. Worst prequel, remake, rip off, or sequel. The winner of that went to Winnie the Pooh as well, uh, but it was up against Ant Man and the Wasp. That that was up uh, for a few. Uh, uh, nomination. I mean, I, I, I that that is the first movie in a long time where I was hitting the jump ahead by like twenty seconds button. Yeah, and Man I, of the Lost. I, I, I couldn't. Mania. Yeah, uh, The Exorcist, Believer, uh, and then you had Expendables, Indiana Jones and the Dial of, and then it says still beating a dead horse. <laughs> no, that's unfair. I liked it. No, I, I, did, I, I, too. I came in on it. I let everything settle, let the dust settle, let all the bad reviews come out. And when I watched it, I enjoyed it. It was a little it was long. A, yeah. It and was. It, the, the movies are too damn long, man. Is it great? No. But it was fun. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Uh, then you had Worst Director, Reese Frake Waterfield for Winnie Pooh. Oh, man. Winnie the Pooh and Blood and Honey. Obviously, they were the big, big uh, winners uh, for the rest. I guess they didn't year. show up. Uh, that was up against The Exorcist, Ant-Man and the Wasp, and uh, Expendables. The problem and with Mag the, 2, The Trench. With The Exorcist 2, they brought back Ellen Burstyn from the original. And so you were thinking, oh, I guess they're going to really be serious about this. Yeah. And, and, and no, no. And worst screenplay went to Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, as well. <laughs> okay. And was this, uh, was the Winnie the Pooh in the first of this uh, public domain uh, yes. run of these yeah. scary, uh, they're, they're obviously they're, they're going to start to to take these beloved characters and turn them into homicidal maniacs. Like they're going to do with um, Steamboat Willie. Uh, that, yeah, yeah, one yeah, of the ones yeah, that's, that's one of those the that's treatment. for the horrid treatment. So, uh, you know, the original version of Mickey Mouse. Yeah. All right. Well, anyhow, those are the Razzies. We'll see if uh, Sly uh, shows up and uh, right. accepts his, his. You know, that'd be kind of cool at this point. Yeah. Make it part of his, um, the, the family still own, right? Yep. I saw a clip this past weekend. They were in Philadelphia running the steps. Oh, really? Yeah. Did Sly do it? Um, It was just a teaser that I saw on Instagram, but he said he was bringing the girls because they hadn't been there since they were kids. Okay. And they wanted to do it. But the filters on that show, Kathy, like they'll do a shot, which is like, uh, you know, B-roll of them out in real life. And then when they do their sit up, like they're... Their setup shot, like not one of them has a single wrinkle on their face. It's yeah, completely that's, that's smooth standard. and yeah. clear. It's the same it's lenses hilarious. they use for the Real Housewives movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 you, yeah. You might as well be shooting through a block of concrete. God, I'm so far away from that stuff. I yeah. never watch any of this stuff. <laughs> this, this gauzy sort of haze. Wow. All right. So anyhow, the the Oscars and the Razzies, they are all uh, in the books now. So that is done and done. I saw this uh, this interesting article. It was a list of uh, I, I forgot what I might have gotten it from BuzzFeed, but um, uh, it's a list of uh, phrases that were invented by TV and movies that we use regularly. I love stuff like this. Yeah, and some of them I didn't. Some of them I was familiar with, like uh, Debbie Downer came from Saturday Night Live. Oh, okay. And that, they they like made it up, and then people started using it after that. That's like a. I mean. It's used all the time. That's a regular, yeah. yep. Uh, but here's one I did not know. Nightmare fuel. That was originally coined by Mystery Science Theater 3000. Whoa, they created nightmare fuel? Yeah. Interesting. Was, yeah, isn't that cool? I, I don't know which episode that happened in, but apparently... Oh, no, here it goes. It comes from episode 521 of Mystery Science Theater 3000. Well, you know, Richard Lewis, we talked about, um, you know, the, the from hell. Yeah. Wedding from hell. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he, he created that. He started that whole thing. Uh, the term bucket list was popularized by the movie of that same name, Jack Nicholson. Really? And uh, Morgan Freeman. Oh, I thought what? I remembered uh, before that. So okay. do I. I thought they were keying off that. No. Ah. Yeah, I don't know. It says it was popularized by the 2007 film, so maybe they didn't create it. Maybe they but they made it popular. It. All right. 
Um, Spam was created by Monty Python's Flying Circus. Uh, and I'd, I'd never have seen that moment, but I did know about that. It was, so that might have popularized it as well, because Spam as a food product existed before that, yeah. yes? Mm, I guess so, yeah. Uh, core memories are not a real thing in neuroscience or psychology. Oh the term gosh. seems to have come out of the movie Inside, Inside Out. Inside Out, yeah, and sure. I, I still use that. I, I hear people use it all the time. There was a video the other day, and it was a, 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 of a child having a very poignant moment, and um, it, it was they were playing the music from that <laughs> part of the Man. film, and it said core memory, you know, moment. And Nick had pointed this out to me. He's like, you know who created that music? Our friend Michael Giacchino. Yeah, yeah. I if he's so doing the sequel. Whenever I hear that 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 melody, I'm like, your heart just swells and it kills me every time. It's, it's incredible. It's, it's yeah, yeah. You know what? I'll bet you he is doing the the music from that film. I hope he is. He's yeah. you know he's now he's a big popular director. Yeah, I texted him the other day and he's like, I'm in the studio all week, so I'll bet you that's what they're working on right now because the trailer for that just came out. Uh, wardrobe malfunction was invented with uh, the Janet Jackson debacle. Right, I right. I remember that being the first time I'd ever heard that. Really? Blood. Yeah. Did you huh. ever hear? Did you now? Again, I guess we can delineate between the first time and or the time it became prominent, and and that I, I can't. When you hear wardrobe malfunction, what do you immediately think of? That moment, right at the Super Bowl, when her boob fell out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which and the question still boob lingers. Fell out. Was he, it he ripped it right off? It was. Off. Off. <laughs> It was planned. Yeah. There was not a single thing falling out. He did that. Yeah, they they yes. worked on that together. It was like, we're going to do this shocking moment. It's gonna and be, it was lame, It's going to be great. But well, it, I don't know. I mean, it, it got, like you said, that's what we think of I when know, we hear wardrobe I know. malfunction. And it changed everything as far it as... It acted oh, up yeah, for us. Yeah. Indecency uh, yep. fines for uh, the FCC went through the roof on that we, stuff after that. It was a defining moment. We had a big, everyone got the big sit down and the big here, the fines per infraction and all this crap. It was yeah. a nightmare. I relate it to TiVo because that's when people could rewind back oh for the first time. Yeah. And so everybody had it. Because if, if you didn't have TiVo, you barely saw it. Yeah. Like it was so quick, it moved on and you're like, did that just happen? So I'll bet you it ranks him one of the when they kept stats of most oh, yeah. rewound mm -hmm. moments oh, sure. yeah, yeah. of Tebow's history. <laughs> uh, I here's had about one, three Tebow's. Here's one: uh, Trey Parker and Matt Stone invented the word derp, mm. uh, th though its uh, first use wasn't in South Park, but they did apparently derp. Yeah, okay, invent that. And I've seen. I don't use the word derp, but I've seen no. people write it in uh, posts and stuff like what, that. Was it created for? Um, Basketball? Because I don't picture. know. Yeah. Uh, it was? Yeah, according to the origins of derp. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's from New York Magazine. They they quoted it back, or they traced it back to basketball. By the way, I'm a fan of basketball. Yeah, I think it's... it's you always funny. did like that I'm movie. A, I think it's I, a funny movie. I never saw it. I never <gasps> sat through the whole is, thing. Is it great? No, but it, it is also very uh, Zucker Brothers in its feel. So, I, yeah, yeah. I like that. Uh, in 1984, Ghostbusters was the first to use the term their toast as a way to uh, describe someone who is a finished or in serious trouble. That was the first time I ever heard it. Yeah. yeah. Didn't know that. Uh, Daffy Duck invented the word Nimrod. <laughs> no kidding. To mean an idiot or a fool. Though yeah. many think that it was Bugs Bunny, it was actually Daffy Duck who had coined the term Nimrod. It's funny. What is, what is that? Do we know that... The Technical derivation of, or is that just gibberish? I think they just made it up. There's a character in the Bible named Nimrod. Really? Yeah. A biblical figure mentioned in the book of Genesis and the book of Chronicles. He's the son of Cush. Cush. <laughs> What's up, Cush? Cush Lash, Cush Lash. And then uh, he's a great grandson of Noah. Hey, Cush. Come here. Mm, mm. <laughs> uh, Cush is also a character in um, Jerry Maguire. Oh, okay. So, so anyway, was Nimrod an idiot? He was a mighty hunter before the Lord and began mighty in the earth. Okay. I don't know. Anymore. So w w at what point did Nimrod, maybe Daffy Duck, uh, popularized it as a uh, way to call someone an idiot? I bet you yeah. somebody like Fritz Freeling was, uh, you know, looking for a, a word to use. Yeah. And they just... Nimrod. Uh, yeah. Right. I mean, they, you know, that's how a lot of these things... They're flipping through the Bible and they're like, all right, this is a funny word. Yeah. We'll use it in a Looney Tunes cartoon. Yeah. There are a lot of funny words and names in the Bible like yeah. Jethro and... Ellie Mae. Uh, Ellie Mae. <laughs> the whole Clampin family. They're all there. there. Yeah. 
Uh, so then you have, uh, apparently Saturday Night Live invented the phrase mom jeans. I remember oh. that bit in 2003, and apparently, according to this source, they, they were the I, first I, to I'm, coin that term. I'm going to say they, they may have brought it to the, the front, but I'd heard mom jeans before yeah. that. Yeah. 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 That's, okay. I can't believe that they created Debbie Downer in the 2000s. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've heard that before. Well, again, that could have been the first time it became popularized mm -hmm. and got a national um, <clears throat> forum. Uh, the listen to this. Now, this sounds really weird. Uh, using ribbit as a frog sound, it says here probably comes from an episode of Gilligan's Island, what? which is the first <laughs> recorded use of the word ribbit. Ribbit, yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I don't remember that episode, but whatever, man. <laughs> what a brilliant series that was. Uh, change the language. Gilligan's, Gilligan's Island. Island. Change our language. It's really, honestly. Do you remember that episode when Gilligan messed up and they couldn't get off the yeah. island? Do you remember that one? Do you remember how they yeah. gone years and years realizing that this guy was the one reason they were never able to leave and they didn't kill him? <laughs> and no, they, they could have eaten him. They should have killed him and killed eaten him, and eat him, and they yeah. would have gotten off the island with full bellies. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I did not know this. Uh, staycation was invented by the mail fraud episode of Corner Gas in 2005. I've never heard of any of that. What? Corner Gas? I've never heard of that. Is that a TV show? Uh, it's, yeah, it says mail fraud episode. Staycation. Staycation. So. I mean, I that to me, staycation is fairly new in... And I, I just thought maybe it was because... You know, when, once I got into like the work field, like out of college and started yeah. working, that it was like something we, you know, people said if you, yeah. you know, were staying right, home so for your he, vacation. Here it says, Kathy, comedian Brent Butt, according to a Connecticut <laughs> travel blog, he created the word staycation. And Brent Butt was a uh, the creator of Corner Gas, the TV show that Pref Preston just referenced. Ah. There you go. Look at that. Look at us. When Everything hell, fills when, in nicely. When the hell was this show on? 2005. Where was it on? Is, I'm looking at it. You don't remember all five seasons of uh, Corner Gas? Five? five seasons of it? Yeah, 107 I've, episodes? 2005. Yeah, Steve, you're right. I'm looking at the, the cast. I don't recognize one single person on Corner this. Gas? Never heard of this am. before. Brent but, Butt, everybody. Come on. But Is, that's where they, they coined the term uh, staycation. Was that the waitress from It's Always Sunny? Uh, I don't know. Don't know. What's okay. her name? No, I don't think so. No. no. Uh-uh. I don't think so. All right, and then the last one on this list is the term brainiac came from the Superman character. It says not the other way around. I don't know what that means. So there, there is a the Superman character brainiac? Oh, okay. Right. And uh, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So that's where that uh, was actually coined from there. I think, um, it, yeah. Okay. Hang, hang on a second. Somebody wants to clarify Nimrod. I'm going to go to Shelly. Hi, Shelly. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, what's up, Shelly? Nick is absolutely right. Nimrod was a great hunter before the Lord in the Bible, and Daffy Duck was making fun of Elmer Hunter. Of Elmer Fudd. There Fun, you he's go. A hunter. You have pulled it together. Perfect, Shelley. Total Nimrod. sense. Yeah. I love yeah, it. He was hunter Nimrod over here, but because Elmer is such an idiot, it eventually became the word for an idiot. There you go. All right. That makes sense. There you go. He was mocking him, saying, oh, he thinks he's a great hunter, but he's not. He's a moron. Thanks, Shelly. Appreciate yeah, that. Sure. All right. That, that, it's all cleared up now. Elmer That's Fudd. what Tweety Bird called Yosemite Sam dickhead. Was Elmer Fudd an idiot? He was, I guess um, he was, kind, he of was kind of an idiot, yeah. yeah. It, but um, who took care of him better than Bugs Bunny? Yeah. Brain stuff. Big key, always giving big kisses on yeah, the yeah. lips. Yeah, that's big. what he would do. All right, well, anyhow, uh, we now have the, the Oscars and the Razzies and these origins and all that stuff. So hopefully you're you're going about your day in a better mood. Yeah, We've especially, yeah. I think you've been enlightened. You've been turned on to some things. Yep. And you learn the origins of Nimrod. Today we are going to talk to uh, T.J. Miller, comedian, yes. actor. Uh, he has got a new stand-up album. It's called Smooth Peanut Butter. And it is available across a bunch of different platforms. So we'll talk to him. Uh, around 9 o'clock or so. If you will hang out for that, we would appreciate it. We have a new Word of the Week prize this week, it being a Monday, and we have a uh, trifecta of concerts to, uh, tickets to give away. Uh, we have three, we have uh, pairs to each of these shows. MM Barbecue, first of all, and the tickets went on sale on Friday. Daryl Hall and Elvis Costello are playing The Man on July 10th. And then Pierre is going to have an announcement today 
uh, at noon, and it is another band you will want to see. I don't even know who it is. I didn't hear about no, this concert announcement. No, up. apparently but, it's big though. But we will give away tickets to that too. So make sure that you are with Pierre to make sure that you get all the correct information, and he will be in to get us the first letter and give us a little tease for what might be to come. So we're going to take a break. Come back in a second. As always, the weekend has supplied us with many great bizarre file stories. We'll share them when we get back. So stay with us. Preston and Steve. On 93.3 WMMR. After traffic on 93.3 WMMR. All right, thank you, Kathy. Can I do a couple shout-outs real quick, Steve? I got this one uh, from, and I I must say, I'm I'm proud of myself because, well, this one I didn't get on the time requested, but I received this like in early January. And so I've only missed it by six days. That's pretty good, or five days, so. Did you Uh, ever know you were my hero? No, but thank you for acknowledging that. You're everything I would like <laughs> Wish to be. Wish I could be. Yeah. Uh, Jessica Scrabbit is her name, by Scrabbit. the way. Scrabbit? Yeah. No, sh- no, it's not. It is. Jessica Scrabbit? Yep. It sounds like Jessica yeah. Rabbit, right? That's uh, not, it does. That's not really her name. She says her name is <laughs> Jess Scrabbit, and she writes, it sounds like SC dash rabbit, but feel free to butcher it like Casey did once for comedic effect if you want to. So All it's right. her name. All right. Jessica My husband, Durfee Dirk. Scrabbit. Uh, she said, good morning at Presbo. I heard you read my friend's August shard out the other day. So uh, hopefully I'm not too late for a March shard. I let her know uh, to catch her on the podcast, and she's still super soaked. Anyway, uh, could I please get a nice juicy shard out for Jason R. from Collegeville to encourage him to keep trying to be the best version of himself and have a super birthday sometime on or around March 6th? She uh, said. Yeah. Uh, preferably before 7.30 a.m. if possible, so he hears it. No, I don't do the no, times. come game. on. Uh, that would be fantastic. I haven't missed a podcast since 2020, and I've been listening to you since the Maryland days, and you guys have made uh, me smile on days when I didn't think it was possible. Thanks for all you do rock on. Jess Scrabbit. So here you go. That is a shart out. And then I got this one. Uh, this is from uh, Andy, Andrew Duffy. He says, uh, so my son just represented the Philadelphia area at the New Balance Indoor National Championships in Boston this weekend, where he won the 800-meter freshman division. Wow. He has 11 prior national titles in track and cross country. Uh, But Andy says this was the coolest. So congratulations. Uh, let me see. Does it say his name? It does not say his son's name. Jessica Scrabbit. Yeah, <laughs> Jessica Scrabbit. Congratulations on your many track acknowl- uh, accomplishments. So no, he d- he doesn't give his name. He just so oh, so that sucks. Uh, so that's Andrew Duffy's son, <laughs> and you know who you Andy are, Andy Junior. Andy Junior, if you will. Um, and then do I have another one to get to? No, these aren't for a few more days. So I'll you're doing those. very well. I'm trying. I'm trying to trying to you know get them in a, in a in a decent time. The problem is, is that once you service them, you get a whole influx. That's the tough, you know? the tough part. Because when it, when I do mention them, then everybody starts texting me and emailing me, and I'm like, oh man, that's too many. So we'll do what we can. All right, I do have bizarre file stories. Let's go. Now, bizarre. WMMR presents Kristen and Steve's bizarre, bizarre file. Brought to you by Pro Team Collision, your certified collision repair center. If you get into an accident, Pro Team Collision is there for all of your auto body repair needs. All right, I'm starting off with a dude. Oh, yeah. A former convict who became a criminal justice reform advocate was arrested on several charges, including murder, after police found a human torso in a Bronx apartment while conducting a welfare check. Is this crazy or what? The gruesome discovery was made on Tuesday. Upon arrival, officers found an unidentified human torso at the location. EMS responded and pronounced the aided deceased on the scene. Uh, The victim was identified as Colin Small, 44 years old. The torso was found in Small's apartment. The suspect, Sheldon Johnson, was arrested and charged with murder and other charges. Johnson had previously spent 25 years in prison for attempted murder when he was a high-ranking member of the Bloods gang. After his release... He began working for the Queen's Defender's Office as a client advocate. The office declined to comment on the incident. (laughs) Yeah, we'd prefer to speak this one under the rug. And listen to this. Last month, he appeared on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast where he talked about how he had turned his life around following his time in prison. So I remember seeing this guy. And when it it came uh, up, this whole thing, 
it was one of those inspiring tales, Preston. I've turned it around. I've learned better. And here you go. He said, one, walking around with a torso. He said on on the podcast, one thing I learned really quickly when I got to prison was that prison does two things to you. It brings out the best or it brings out the worst. Uh, police officials said a neighbor reported hearing gunshots coming from Small's apartment and saw a man coming and going from the building multiple times carrying cleaning supplies. Surveillance video outside of the apartment's front door showed a man carrying cleaning supplies in full black garbage bag. Uh, when officers searched his apartment... Uh, they found the victim's head, arms, and legs in the freezer, uh, and it was Johnson that was on the surveillance video. Now, the medical examiner will determine Small's, ca Small's cause of death. Uh, Johnson is being held without bail. Who kills me is that in the uh, surveillance shots, he's wearing a white wig, and he looks like Phil Donahue. Oh, really? Yeah. I if you know. look at that picture over there to the uh, to the side where he's pulling the, uh, the container behind him. I, I, yeah, interesting. So this guy is a an advocate for criminals, and uh, yeah, he chopped a dude up, <laughs> apparently, well, allegedly. Never said he was not an advocate for that as well. A man in Green Bay with a one-of-a-kind first name was taken into custody after an alleged disturbance on the city's east side. According to a criminal complaint, 42-year-old... D's Nuts Kroll. Oh, that is awesome. Was arrested following an, an incident involving a gun. D's Nuts Kroll. Uh, officers were sent to the location for disturbance. When officers got to the scene, two people were brought to a squad car and placed in the back. Additionally, officers took Kroll into custody and he was reportedly standing outside with no shirt on. <laughs> The complaint says that D's Nuts appeared to be <laughs> highly intoxicated. D's Nuts? But when he he but he did follow officers' commands. It is always mentioned that authorities identified Kroll by his Wisconsin ID card, which said <laughs> "D's Nuts Lee Kroll." The two people were uh, who were originally brought to the squad car said that they were arguing with D's Nuts over the phone around 8 p.m. About two hours later, they found the door to the residence was locked. One person said the crawl opened the door and punched them with a closed fist in the shoulder. Uh, this led to a physical altercation, according to the complaint. <sighs> Too bad you guys weren't still having kids at this point, because I'd, I'd pay you good money to name one of them D's Nuts. At one point, D's Nuts allegedly got a gun. Authorities later took the gun into evidence, <laughs> found that it was a CO2 BB gun, ah. and was reportedly loaded and had eight silver 4.5 millimeter BBs in it. <laughs> Uh, when authorities interviewed Kroll, uh, they claimed that it was apparent that he was talking in circles. Uh, throughout the official complaint, Kroll was referred to as D's Nuts. I wonder uh, if he's baptized that way. Uh, Kroll is charged with battery and disorderly conduct. So, uh, but I, I don't know, but legally his name is D's Nuts. Is D's Nuts. We should, have, we should have some sort of contest sometime, like a big a big prize if you all change your name to D's Nuts. If you will actually <laughs> yeah. name your child D's hey, Nuts. We gave away like $100,000 one time for, for nothing. Yeah. Two Ohio women propped up a man's corpse in their vehicle and withdrew money from the dead man's bank account oh before God. dropping the 80-year-old body off at a hospital emergency room. So they weekended Bernie. That's what it is, weekend yeah. of Bernie's. Yep. Prosecutors this week charged Lorene B. Ferrello and Karen Casbohm with theft and gross abuse of a corpse, both felonies in connection with their uh, alleged activities following the death of Douglas Lehman. My Acor attorney, D's Nuts, will be here in a few minutes. According to police, the two women were not related to Lehman, but lived with him at his home. Cops said that Ooh. Ferrello and Cosbohm. Uh, with the help of a third individual, removed Layman's corpse from the residence on Monday and placed the body in the front passenger seat of his car and then headed to a nearby bank's drive through window. The bank, police said, had previously allowed the women to withdraw money from Layman's account as long as he was accompanying them. And on March 4th, a teller apparently was unaware that Layman was dead when the women pulled up and successfully took out $900. It's Investigators insane. charged that the women place Layman in the vehicle in such a manner that he would be visible to bank staff in order to make the withdrawal. How are you doing? Uh, Ferrello and Casbohm then drove to the county medical center where they just dropped his body <laughs> off and departed without providing any information about the man or themselves. What an effed up world. Uh, police subsequently identified the duo and questioned them about the bar bizarre behavior. Uh, the women said that Layman died inside his home. His cause of death is under investigation. Uh, Ferrello's rap sheet includes convictions for reckless assault, possession of drug paraphernalia, criminal trespass, driving to the influence, theft and attempted possession of drugs. 
Uh, Kaz Boehm had previously been convicted of theft, soliciting, criminal trespass, receiving stolen property, and so on. Does that seem to be problematic, that simply having the person in the car where you would release the money, right? Wouldn't Isn't there some sort of documentation or something you'd want signed, right? Well, they said in the past they'd allow these they'd allow women that? to do it. Yeah, they said huh. that as long as he was at accompanying I mean, it's them. not like they could drive around with a dead body, so right? I assume they were kind of like, um, you know, caretakers, I right. guess, of some type. And so if, as long as he was with them, they could they could withdraw the money for him because he in the past he would, you know, say, right. yeah, it's okay, but... It's pretty wild, man. It reminds me of a of a story of someone in my family that we had suspected of um, taking advantage of an elderly oh, woman, yeah. and and like uh, like being her caretaker, but behind her, probably ripping her off. Jeez. Uh, I mean, this is a this is a relative that we distanced ourselves from, right? And uh, it what sounds like. That's what these women were doing. I don't know. I only heard secondhand from other family members that they were doing that type of thing. And there was even thought that they may have... Often? Often. Wow. I don't, I, I don't know. So I never did find out. I've lost touch with those people. Yeah. Don't get together uh, for the holidays. No, we don't. Uh, we don't <laughs> Guess do who's coming? Yeah. So, all right. And there you go. That's all I have in the Bizarre File for you this morning. Why don't we take a break and come back in a moment? Don't forget, TJ Miller is going to be joining us around 9 o'clock. So hang out for a little bit. Return shortly. For her. All right, thank you, Kathy. Uh, Casey is not here today. He is uh, actually, we're not going to see him till we get in Florida. I wonder if he'll have changed a lot when we see him on Thursday. He might. He was uh, he was texting us yesterday. His uh, his son uh, Seamus had a um, a rugby event um, in. Where was it in Charleston. South Carolina? Yeah, Charleston, yeah. South Carolina. Yeah, so he's actually there. Uh, fulfilling all his dad duties. It's it's cool in an event that like he would that. do that. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and rugby, right? And sending us selfies. Yes, he is sending us selfies and whatnot. <laughs> so, uh, and we'll see him. Uh, yeah, when we get to Clearwater, and uh, there was something I was going to mention about that. Um, the weather. Yeah, yeah well, it's going to be really, really nice. It's going to be mid eighties. So, if you happen to be in that area, uh, make sure you come and join us at the game. Uh, and then uh, the next day we're going to be at Coco's, the north uh, location in Clearwater Beach. And uh, I think doors open at 9 and we're going to hang out and do lunch and that whole deal. So. It's going to be, I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. It's going to be cool. We've that, never done anything like that. I got excited about that one after talking to the owner last yep. week. He was really cool. Yeah. And you, you heard about all the liquor. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, it sounded very, very interesting. That's going to be Talking nice. Talking my language. Too. Yes. I'm going to get hammered. <laughs> a flight of crushes, Kathy. They yeah. have all 12 <laughs> crushes yeah. to choose from. That yeah. sounded great. I've yeah. seen a couple comments people asking about joining us at the stadium. I think gates open at 11. Um, they tend to maybe crack them open a few minutes early if you they, get there. They but do, because I remember in years up. past, Marissa, we, we, we weren't quite finished mm -hmm. and, and people would start to congregate. Mm -hmm. we, yeah, we, we love that. Mm -hmm. Yep, around the outfield, you will be able to find us. So while we're waiting to do that, I did notice a few things and I figured it'd be a good idea. The noticer's back. To notice them for you this morning. The noticer notices so you don't have to. That's what I do. Uh, Across an empty field. So. Down a lonely alleyway. His, he's there. Skip Cross the, cross the, the, very, the, the fairway. Place, yes. Uh, so the with uh, with daylight savings time and all that stuff, Kathy, is that why you didn't set your alarm today? Have anything <laughs> it to do it with could that? have been, right? Uh, I was like, you know what? I guess sleep. Uh, in. What the hell? <laughs> no, I have no idea. I don't know what the hell happened. I don't know why my alarm didn't. Were go any off. of you affected by uh, the uh, one hours? I'm all affected by it. Yeah, I hate it so much. I know. Uh, I woke up noticeably tired this morning. I had a harder time going to bed, and then waking up this morning, I, I you know, I get up at uh, three forty-five, and I told myself as I got up, I'm like, this is really two forty-five. They say you're actually more prone to heart attacks, and I had about three or four yesterday. Mm -hmm. ah. uh, yeah, so I think okay. they're right. Yeah. Uh, I did notice though last night, like even though it was not the greatest weather. Um, that it was light out and, I, and you know, That's I was awesome. on the conference call. I'm like, wait, it's still bright outside. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah. I did enjoy that. It's like sun, the sun is out and the love boat's on. <laughs> uh, there is another reason I love it. And that's this uh, particular article that I'm passing along to you. Some businesses will actually benefit from the extra hour of daylight and the ones that benefit the most uh, possibly are golf courses. Well, there, now that's your language. Absolutely. Uh, William Willett argued for daylight savings time in the 1900s because he wanted more daytime to play golf. Yeah. And the golfing industry is a longtime supporter of the concept, by the way. 
Um, in fact, in the 1980s, lobbyists estimated that the golf industry would make $200 million more wow. if we extended daylight savings time by one month <laughs> and started that, uh, I guess, in February instead, which I'd be all for, most definitely. You have a course right across from your home. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> how dark has it been? How dark does it have to be before you cash it in? Uh, th there is a point where there's still light on the horizon and you lose the golf ball <laughs> after it gets about, you know, 100 okay. yards away from you. Right, it's it's right. gone. Forget it. So I've tried to play till the very, very end and have where you hit it and you're like, well, I guess we'll just go down there and see where it ended up. <laughs> but generally it had been till about... 5.30, something like that, okay. Um, okay. where you could get away with uh, still being able to play a little bit. So in the deepest summer, you can do like oh, 7.30, dude. right? Eight? Y oh, nine. Nine. All yeah, right. even close to, to 8.30, 9 o'clock. It's crazy. Like So my buddy Jerry and I, years ago, uh, we decided to play 54 holes of golf in one day. And so because the, that, crazy. we did it in July because yeah. it's the, the days are longest then. And uh, we started at the crack of dawn, and we ended up just as it was dusk, and, and we got in three full rounds, three 18-hole <laughs> rounds. How did you play that day? I played great, man. Two of those rounds I shot in the 70s. It was So then always awesome. play three full rounds of golf. I know. Dude, so, I'm, uh, so on our vacation coming up, I think I've bitten off more than I can What are you doing? Chew. What, what did you do? Me and my buddies, and we're all... I, you know, I'm I'm mid fifties, and then uh, one of my buddies just turned sixty, and and I think I think we I, we still think we're young because we're gonna we're doing four days. We're gonna play thirty six on young. the first, eighteen on the next, thirty six <laughs> the day after, and then eighteen, and then fly right wow. out. So when are the services gonna be held? Yeah, right. <laughs> Aren't you going to Chicago? I am at, yeah. for three days, and then I'm going to Myrtle Beach. Right. So, so Nick, you, oh you, you must understand, he's playing courses on the way to, to yeah. Chicago. Yeah. He'll be well-rested yeah, after yeah. that but, vacation. But here's why I know I'm in a lot of trouble, because I, yesterday I'm walking around the house, I'm like, I'm like, God, my left hip is killing me. I <laughs> What in the hell? Like, as the day went on, like, I was, I was hobbling more and more. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Well, the last couple of days, I've, I've just been shifting my weight slightly different in my swing. And that's why it hurts. And that's why it hurts so bad. <laughs> Dude. It's pathetic. Dude. Pathetic. But so how often, okay, I don't, know, don't mean to make this about a golf <laughs> clinic with you, but I'm perpetually fascinated by this stuff, even though I don't play. Yeah. Um, how often are you adjusting things like that? Constantly. Really? Yeah, Constantly. But, yeah, I would think once you know how to golf and swing, like, Right. That's it. That's your yeah. swing. But then you forget how to do that and you end up doing something else you didn't realize you were doing wrong. And you want to fix there's it. Like, there's like a dozen things that have to happen when you're swinging a Did golf. Did you ever okay. see my left foot? That's yeah. because of golf. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> so anyway, I'm, you know, it's, it's my it's my burden. Jeez. It's my love. It's my yes. burden. Yes, no, it's that's it. All those things. I've been doing these like hardcore workouts, like beyond. Like I have not done these in years. And like powerlifting? I mean, there's there's a lot of weightlifting and like heavy weights that I'm not okay. used to, you know. And so one of the trainers came over. I was doing one exercise, and he was like, "What are you doing?" And I was like, "I am trying." And he was like, "You are right. You are." He was like, "You're trying." He was like, "Good, jo good job." Uh, What's your name? <laughs> a jelly donut. Uh, but uh, yeah, daylight savings time from an economic point, golf on a national level creates almost seventy billion dollars a year in economic impact. I would imagine restaurants as well with alfresco dining and things. That nature, yeah. right? Yeah, would would stand benefit a little bit more money from uh, the extra daylight prostitutes. Hours. Yeah, prostitutes. Yes. Please. Yeah, and they you say know. retail uh, benefits from it. Really? And people are shopping. I guess I don't know. After work, they're just saying they shop later. You well, just you just feel you feel more dialed in. You feel, the day seems as a listen. It just naturally does. Whether it's our our natural rhythm or, or whatever, but it seems like wow. Yes. What a long day I had. Yes. Or like, I got so much done. In the winter, it's like you're racing against. Yes. And, and even though yeah. you're not, we have things called lights that can help us, you know, see. But but still, naturally, you're like, I got to get this done. It's just the way you perceive things. Well, for me, if if I'm out of the house and it's dark, I'm like, oh, my God. Gotta it get is home so late, the I have to get yeah. home. Yeah, like as if I'm going to, you know. Before the animals come out. <laughs> Seriously. Now, the it wolves are becoming out. Yeah, it doesn't matter what, what time the clock says yes. it is. But you feel it. If it's dark and let's say, Kath, you, you had a couple of errands to go run 
and it, it, it wasn't that far away, but it's it's already, you know, 7.30 and pitch black dark. You're like, eh, I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, as opposed to, oh, it's light out. Yeah, let's go. All wrong, you know? yep. Now yeah. I have to go buy headlights. <laughs> Uh, so there are, you know, some people don't hate the, uh, the changing of the clocks. It doesn't bother me. I know Nick, it's, and we're not going to go into the full <laughs> so uh, like dissertation. I've done it. No, 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 no. I'm well past fuming. Like I realize where things stand and, and we came close as a, a country to like eliminating the time shift. For me, it's, it's the shift. I don't mind one way or the other. I just don't like uh, changing clocks twice a year. Uh, it, it may get more traction though, because I saw some politician, I didn't read who it was. Uh, had and and what you need is a catchy phrase. Apparently, that's work. That's what works. Yeah. That's How what about, motivates people. Is a catchy phrase. It's lock the clock. Lock the oh, clock. Like that, that might actually work. How about Hasta La Vista, baby? That's uh, I catchy. think that's been taken. <laughs> but well, you know, maybe resurface that. Somebody <laughs> uh, texted me yesterday or messaged me on Instagram. And they're just like, why don't we just pretend like the clocks are the same year round, <laughs> and and everybody else can adapt to our schedule? Uh, there are places that are doing that. Well, um, Arizona does it. Yeah. There's like a weird section of Indiana would never. They never switch the clocks. Puerto Rico, I think. Have, as well? Has any Hawaii. has anybody ever visited a place? That is an hour off time wise because they don't observe. I, did. I have not. I have no idea. What do you do? I met my mother as a little girl. It was <laughs> the wildest thing. But I mean, does your your iPhone That's a good question. location no, wise it, automatically no, adjust? It doesn't. I was in Arizona one time and uh, there are certain uh, Native American reservations in Arizona that do or don't observe the shift, right? And the rest of the state does. So, um, Arizona never changes its clock. It's the same time year round. They don't have daylight savings time or they don't have daylight standard time. I forget which one, okay. but they don't do the switch. But some of the reservations do. So you go from one section of Arizona to another section of Arizona where you're either an hour ahead or an hour behind the rest of the state. How are you, how are you handling and your, like your business appointments? Your and phone like does not, you have to be aware of it. Yeah, if yeah. If you cross from Arizona to Utah, right. half the year, it's uh, um, Utah's on mountain zone. The other half of the year, uh, oh, I'm sorry, half the year Arizona's on mountain time zone. The other half of the year Arizona's on Pacific time zone. It's crazy. It's, it's just bizarre, yeah. But they're used to it. Like if they, yes. if my uncle lives out there. Like he, they know it all yeah, and they're they just used to it. But I've never, I've never spent time in Arizona, so I've never had to adjust. I, right. I don't know. Yeah. What's, what's the, uh, what's the, uh, the one remaining clock in your house that doesn't make the change automatically? Oh, it's in the laundry room. <laughs> yeah. It, it, the batteries don't even work. I mean, like it's just... Yeah, our microwave. We gave up on it. <laughs> microwave and the uh, the range top. They don't exactly. Adjust. Yep. Those are the two. You don't adjust me. those? No, I do. Oh, you do. They you don't do it automatically. Yeah. Oh, they do. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you meant which one do I not change? Oh no, the one. The which ones? Don't, oh, which ones do you have to change manually? Yeah, microwave and 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 uh, the the oven, and right. we have two uh, standard. You know. Uh, face, but they're non-digital right, clocks. Right, right, right. Okay. What would you call that? Analog. Analog clock. Thank you. Um, what about um, the si clock on the Sibian? No, that's that's always a good time. <laughs> is what that is. Uh, no, but we we st I always I keep a, a couple of analog clocks in the house. I, I, I love in fact, analog. Yeah, I, I I like to have that. Yeah. Uh, there's something about seeing that clock face that uh, that is comforting to me. I don't know why. Um, hang on a second here. We have a call about daylight savings time. I'm going to go to Ben. Hi, Ben. Good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. What's so up, I bud? Used to live in, I used to live in Cincinnati, Ohio, right mm -hmm. on the border of Indiana and Ohio, mm -hmm. right? And Indiana doesn't doesn't observe daylight savings, so half the year we'd have everybody with Indiana and Ohio were the same time zone, and half the year it was different. And so it would wreak real havoc because a lot of our team members were across the border, and so sometimes they'd show up on time, and other times they'd Oh wait, the clocks are different. We got to figure this out. I didn't realize that Indiana didn't observe. It's not the whole state, right? Um, no, they're parts of it. Yeah, Ben. Yeah, parts, <laughs> which is how, so bizarre. How, could it, how does that even? I don't know. I don't it know. By counties. Yeah. You ever watch West Wing? They have West Wing, uh, the TV show about the, about uh, President Bartlett. All that. There's a whole episode where some yep. of the campaign staff get left behind yep. because they don't realize that Indiana. It's has true. Good. Could we? Could we petition the Thanks, state ben. to allow Bala Kinwood to be on Pacific time? Maybe Pacific time. <laughs> That'd be could, all right. Could you imagine? Wow. We could we could watch those. Uh, you know. Like the Oscars, yes, and stuff like exactly. That in the middle of the day, a lot wonderful. of people forget they were, the Oscars. So they in uh, in California they started at four o'clock. Four o'clock, yeah. yeah. All right, uh, all right. Let me see what else I noticed here. More for the noticer. How about this? The cost of having a menstrual period varies by country. 
What if we were to shift it back and forward an hour every <laughs> month? It's cheaper. A health news analyst uh, analysis found that in the United Arab Emirates, you can expect to pay 23 cents per sanitary pad and $2,668 over a lifetime. So you were exploring the option of the menstrual cup? The cup, yeah. And I assume so well. that would have been a savings as well, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because you never wash that thing, right? No, you I do mean, wash it. You, you wash it. it. Oh, I'm sorry. You reuse it. You actually have to boil it. <laughs> do you? <laughs> yes. Each time? That's got to hurt. So you'd have a couple of cups uh, standing by. Um, I... Mm, I don't know. Like no, I think like I a think, flight of menstrual cups. Listen, I didn't get, I didn't go that far into it because uh, it did not work out for me. No. It did not fit the shape of me, so it didn't work out. But okay. I think they boil it after the cycle. Like I think you use it for your cycle, right? And then boil it. They have a variety of shapes, right? Of yes, cups, I yes. tried three different, and they have ones. one that okay. says "Number One Boss," Preston. Preston, that's what I. It started to get expensive because they're they're not cheap, and I bought three different mm. ones. I bought different sizes, different brands. No, Are they, mark. Do they yeah. make them like they like disposable cups, where like you know the side of the water fountain where you can just <laughs> gross. No, that's the point of it, is that it's right. not disposable. Like the conical shaped? Yeah. Yeah. yeah What's that point sticking out of here? Pull it out of that little rack. Yeah. Oh, that's my cup. Uh, to me, that would seem like something. So how expensive? You say I, it's getting cheaper. What, what, what kind of reduction are we looking at? In the United States, pads cost 15 cents each for a total of $1,710 until a woman reaches menopause. So over your lifetime, you're only going to spend $1,700. Only. Uh, Germany and Finland are the most cost-effective places to have a cycle. Feminine pads will just set you back uh, $490 over a lifetime. The, most wow. ex the least expensive then. Yes, right? yes. Oh, okay. Germany and Finland. Um, and the, they uh, use elk hide. Uh, the analysis assumed menstruation would start at 12 and end at 51. Oh, 12, that's early. And would occur about 468 times if in I'm, your life. Not to be indelicate, but when did you get your... your well, I shouldn't say that. 12 is probably not early. Um, I was a, a late bloomer, so right. I did not get... My, I didn't get mine until I think I was maybe... 15 or even 16. Wow. No kidding. Yeah, oh. yeah I was wow. really late. Mm -hmm. okay. I thought it was yeah, like it usually was, like 14, 13. Yeah, it was, it was like a joke among my friends and my mom. And like th they were like, just go as long as you can. It sucks so bad. Right. Don't like wish it upon yourself. So I you must have been thrown off because at that point you had your mustache. Shut up. Yeah. Um, I, I wonder if that means the hair on my back. <laughs> you'll have a delayed uh, menopause because of that. I wonder if Yeah, that, like I wonder if it's, I yeah. know I do have friends that are um, starting the, the process and starting to, to go through through it and um when i went to the doctor she's like yeah i don't think you're there yet so that maybe is the reason oh that's pretty cool we'd be happy when it's over uh i i just hear how well i, I experienced uh what my mom went through and a couple of my aunts and it's it's they're freaking crazy did she did she get involved because because um some people some people you know who fear it the, they go through it effortlessly, and others, you know, I think. Are you, I, I think it's a crapshoot, right? You're okay. So you were asking when when the menstrual cycles are over, right? Right. Preston, yeah, yeah. Or when was, menopause was, is over. Uh, I was just saying, yeah. When when the whole thing, yeah. When the when the menstrual cycles when are you're over, yeah, will you I mean, be glad that's done with. I mean, yeah. That it's, right? it is just not fun. I feel bad for ever, you guys ever having to go through that. But the, menopause, the, they say, is no freaking joke. So yeah. No, the amount of plumbing that they deal with is and, and never take it for granted that we got off on the on the. Yeah. Side of things. Um, but do they say you, they I just, just have a pump? They just gave the pricing for menstrual pads. Did they use any other products? No, that was it. That's it. It okay. was just the pads. So, um, yeah, sanitary pads. So it didn't include what are, tampons. Yeah, they, I've not purchased. What does what like a box of tampons go for these days? I, I wouldn't even know. God, I don't. I don't. It's, I just like pile up. Yeah, I don't even know. Guys. It's Marissa? expensive. But, I mean, you'd like uh, maybe like twelve or fourteen dollars. And how many? How many tampons per box? Thirty. Like a gross. And how many do you go through in a cycle? That depends on the person. Like okay. a ballpark figure. 50? Um, you I, go through a whole box? No, 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 no. no, okay. no. Maybe right. you get like three or four periods out of it. I, I get a lot more. I don't... All right. So, yeah. so you're talking like 15, 20 bucks every two months. Uh, Is it a hockey match? Or? Well, here. So here. Uh, you can buy like... Because you can buy value packs and stuff like that. So this one has... The ones that I use, there's 34 in a box, and it's $8 at Target. Oh, that's not bad at all. No. Yeah, 34 in a box, 8 so, yeah, that's not bad at all. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, and you do not go through... It's about 50 bucks a year. It's not too bad. Yeah. You don't no. go through... I don't go through a full box at all. 
Is he a quick complaint about this? Oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. Do they, yeah. Do, they, do, they, do they have a sell by? I mean, do they expire? <laughs> Will it, does That's the tampon expire? I don't know. They probably like rot like at some point because it's just cotton. <laughs> they just rot. But oh like God. years, years down the line. Oh, that tampon you gave me was yeah. rotting. <laughs> When well, you're remember, desperate, no, I had one that ooh. that got <laughs> rotten tampon. Da- rotten tampon. You know, uh, it's a band. That's name. a band name. Yeah. Yeah. I'm um, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I had one break in half when I was taking it out. Look and, at you. But that's. A, I wonder if there was. <laughs> if it was like older. If it was a rotten yeah. tampon. Maybe. You rotten tampon. Shelf life of tampons is about five years. Oh, oh. there you go. That's uh, shorter than I thought. I thought would have thought. Yeah, listen, your chocolate lasts longer. <laughs> Maybe just use a Hershey bar. <laughs> Ew. Right? It's got that white, milky stuff on it. <laughs> What's the next topic in the noticer? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's a Circus good Circus penises, butt plugs. No. <laughs> I actually have a feel good story for no, it. I, I like it. That one wasn't one. Um, I thought you guys might like this. This is really nice. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> He threw me off of that. In 1939, the Dongs, a Chinese-American family in uh, Coronado, California, found themselves unable to rent a house amid racially restrictive housing laws that favored white buyers and renters. But Emma and Gus Thompson, a black entrepreneurial couple in town, allowed the family to rent and eventually buy their Coronado property when nobody else would. And now... To thank the Thompsons for helping them get a toehold in American society. Remember, this is 1939. 1939. The Dongs are now donating... $5 Five million dollars to black college students using proceeds from the sale of that house. How about How that? Awesome is that? That is awesome. What a great story. That is a feel-good story. I feel good hearing that story. Uh, Janice Dong, who's 86 years old, said uh, it may be it may enable some kids to go and flourish in college that might not have had uh, been able to otherwise. And you know the first recipient? Mm-hmm. Dees Nuts Anderson. Shut up. <laughs> Right? From the dongs. From the dongs. The D's nuts. Um, no, I love stories like that. This is great. Yeah. Uh, the Dong family will also work to have uh, San Diego State University's Black Resource Center named for uh, Emma and Gus, who were born into slavery in Kentucky. Uh, Lloyd Dong Jr. <clears throat> said the Thompsons gave their family a start with the land and that it is time for them to do the same with others. He said, without them, uh, we would not have the education and everything else. Uh, their properties include the Thompson's original home and an eight-unit apartment complex next door. Family members estimate the combined value to be worth about $8 million. That's uh, amazing. Lloyd Dong Jr.'s older brother, Ron Dong. Uh, what played, about Ding? Right. <laughs> uh, they plan to donate their portions, eight, it's uh, a very, $5 million. Very generous family. Yep. Uh, I'm, I, I, I'm a sucker for that show on the History Channel about the, the, the people who fed us, the, the yeah. men who fed America, whatever the hell the series is. I always get it wrong. But you see a, a, a load of of stories about people coming and, and fighting adverse yeah. reactions or, yeah. or to their ethnicity or whatever and and overcoming and triumphing. It's very inspiring. And this is uh, summarized very well. It says here, amid the backdrop of a, a national conversation about reparations, this isn't a story about atonement and repair. This is according to Kevin Ashley, uh, who's a historian out of Car- Coronado. Uh, the Thompson's gesture was a transaction with no strings attached. Uh, the Dongs didn't have anything to pay back. Instead, Ashley said the story is about honoring and recognizing the enduring impact of one family's will to help another get ahead. As the country continues to debate the merits and logistics of reparations uh, for its history of uh, slavery, the Dong family's decision to give back to the black community could serve as an example, he said. Uh, Ron and his wife, Janice, are both retired teachers. Uh, They believe that education can change lives. And uh, Ron Dong said it's just exactly what's appropriate. What a great story. Well, you just, sometimes Uh, you do what's right. And that's very cool. It's funny, though, you look at the the, the houses, I forget. uh, uh, This small Preston, when we were out there, we talk about this story all the time when we were out in California looking at these places that you would figure, okay, maybe that's that's $250,000, $300,000. It's $1.3 million. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, God yeah. Almighty! It's the uh, it's the, the the property values there the and all of that. Average price of a house, I think, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, uh, mistaken is 
800, 750 to 800,000 dollars in California? Something like that. I mean, it's insane. Yeah. I thought that would be nice to share with you. Notice right. or put a smile on our faces. Well, let's notice another thing. Now back to the horrible stuff. Uh, no, this actually it's all is good. Yes, yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, so what's up, bro? How you doing, man? Uh, the TSA introduced new self-screening technology at Harry Reid International Airport in Vegas. So you uh, pat yourself down? last week in an effort to make security checks faster and safer for travelers. Where am I coming from today? It's kind of like that, Steve. I, I watched a... I was I was half watching a video uh, and I didn't get a chance to see it because it was on at home and I was doing something else and then I saw this story and unfortunately it doesn't describe exactly how it works. I saw... It, it, there's basically like a, a kiosk I think yeah. that I saw. I think you and I were seeing the same thing. Uh, and then you have to watch yourself though if you have any shifty movements or anything that would, would uh, give you pause for concern, then you have to take yourself into the back and strip search yourself. Oh, is that how you yeah. do it? Wait, so there's no per there's no one there? There's no human there? Um, yeah. I see, this, this the is the device. So they're, they're screeners, uh, kind of akin to what you see right now when you go Where through. Where you walk through and you hold put your, your hands up. up. Yeah. yeah, so they can take a, a nut shot of yours. So, yeah, the uh, technology which is being tested for the first time Wednesday draws comparisons to self-checkout lanes at supermarkets. It will officially launch on March 11th uh, today. It even asks how many store bags you bought. Oh, really? Yeah. When you go through those things where you have to put your arms up, yep. do you close your eyes? No. No. I do. Why? I, just in case, like, it's the rays burn your eyes go out? Yeah, in case it'll, like, <laughs> burn my retina. Uh, my eyes! I do not close my eyes. I do the same thing for dental x-rays. Uh, oh, well, okay, maybe. And anytime I'm in any sort of machine that's I'll tell you what, emitting the, something that'll kill me. With the dental x-rays, Kathy, is always <laughs> you make sure... like dental x-rays. Always make sure yes. that the apron is pulled up high. Well, you can ask. You can ask for the thyroid oh, cover. Uh, yeah, and they, they'll they do that. Yes, that is something that you should always ask so for. So your, your eyelids will protect you? Yeah. Yes, Nick. Okay, <laughs> please. God. Better than nothing. Yes. <laughs> is it... Are we serious? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Nick, you don't know about the lead-coated eyelids? You don't. You're, Look, come on. What? Your eyelids don't have protective lead coats? Oh, oh, that's these. what they're made for. What do you think your eyelids are for? But to protect, protect against your eyes. radiation. Dental x-rays? Yes. Yes. And the, the, I, this, Nick, oh, come on. Come on. You're acting shocked. I don't know. I'm just saying. I do it. Is this there anybody is, else with me? <laughs> she's the, she's her mother's daughter, and you know the medical. Yeah. Your right? eyelids are like not even a millimeter thick. Come on. I don't they're know. They're bulletproof. I'm just saying. I do it for... For, I don't know, maybe. For your reasons. For yes, for yes. my... I do it for reasons. Re I do it for I got reasons, reasons, Nick. Yeah. Uh, Administrator David uh, Pukeski is championing the shift toward more autonomous security processes, although he said he believes that it will be a while before travelers get used to the new technology. I uh, said the ultimate goal is to enhance security, efficiency, and passenger experience. You have TSA pre-check, right? Yes. All right, and did you see now, and, and, and please, I don't know if this is real or not, there are a number of, they're advertising, and they've bought commercial time on various networks to talk about this online way of getting your TSA pre-check. Is that even conceivable that you could... That, yeah, but because they you, were so backed up. Right. Is that, well, maybe that's it, because I always thought there at some point had to be some sort of in-person right. interaction, because well, can, it, it you, is a security check. You can renew, so like I had mine for, for years, and in order to renew it, I just do it online. I don't have to go back to the but it, all right. But at some point, they have to take your fingerprints and things like that. Now, no, so you have, to, what, you have to be there in person for that, I would imagine. I'm getting the impression that the, what they're saying is you do not, that you can conduct all of this online. Like the initial. Right, everything. So, yeah. Preston, you got the TSA pre-check. What does that get you on uh, Wednesday when we fly? When you have, we well, you have global His entry, eyelids right? will be protected. Also have global entry, yeah, which gets you pre-check. But that, that means you can, same same type of service, but internationally should you fly elsewhere. Uh, essentially, you go to a special line uh, that's much quicker. You don't have to take off shoes. don't have to take off your belt, your jacket. You don't have to take things out of your bags at all. You just throw them in, send them through. And uh, and it's quicker. There okay. are fewer people, fewer people there, and it moves more quickly. And they, everybody gets a free glass of champagne. <laughs> they should. Wish. There is a. There's rarely a line <clears throat> for right. for pre check, right. Nick. Um, I think it is completely worth it. Are you gonna? Are you gonna leave everybody behind? Are Hell we gonna, yes. We're gonna go yes. Yeah. Right, okay. Kathy and I'll be in the bar. <laughs> right. uh, and, I, and in fact, the last time that I did fly, and I went to the airport, and it was to fly to Tampa as well. Uh, I got there and it was because you just never know security wise what you're going to get. And I yeah. walk in and sure enough, the line is all the way back down the hallway towards parking. And I'm like, 
this is why I got this. This is why I got this. You know, you know where it's really great? One of the airports is Orlando. Orlando is always crazy. You know, all the yep. families and kids and whatever. And we flew out of there last year, Nick. And the TSA there, I like... Orlando is one airport. I love having it. Nice. I was not used to you guys not having it. I've had it for years. Um, and I stayed in line with you guys last you year in Florida. I, did, I, I look, was stuck. You didn't stay with me. And then I, I was right like, through. oh, God, they're going to make fun of me for just leaving. So I stood there with you guys. Why would you do that? Yeah, I don't take know. advantage of it. But listen, you don't have to. So um, I never went and got TSA, Nick. I I went um, and got global entry. So years oh, ago, right. I mean, I've had mine for since they first started it. What is and the de- what is the uh, the delineation there? Global entry and TSA precheck. Well, like Preston said, so the global 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 entry is if you fly internationally as well, but it comes with TSA precheck. So then, yeah. so you if just, you, get global, you just entry, get global entry, you yeah. automatically and have how the TSA elaborate pre-check. is that? Uh, that was well. That initially, you have to go. You go for the interview. Yeah. You do the fingerprints, like all of that kind of stuff. But that's what I was saying. When I yeah. renewed mine, all of that was done online. I did not have to go back to the airport. That's right. I forgot I was talking about global entry. Maybe pre-check's different, Steve. I'm not really sure. But just a few um, good questions. Have you ever broken a tampon? <laughs> um, also, yeah, you get through uh, customs quicker. So uh, yes, mm, that's that, my, my. So my yes. wife is now all of that, and she says she has the global entry. Yeah, she should yeah, for as yeah, much yeah. as she travels. So she she con- she just bolts right through because customs sometimes can be insane though, when you come back. Yep. Though they have the, now that the the um, yes. the the cameras the system is set up right there and it, it is expediting it a little but bit. But sometimes it, because a lot of times especially when you're coming back from the Caribbean a lot of flights arrive at the same time. So well, it's and, like and my shorts are always packed with howler monkeys. <laughs> So the the self self service uh, uh, TSA stuff. Uh, the innovative approach greets passengers with a virtual agent who is ready to assist by answering questions. TSA agents are hi Preston <clears throat> available for support, but they don't need to be physically present at the checkpoint. The right. new system also allows officers to monitor X ray machines remotely, potentially reducing the number of TSA agents needed at each checkpoint. Um, the setup aims to be. Like a regular TSA checkpoint, but with fewer agents and more streamlined operations. Step away from the camera. Uh, features include automated conveyors for luggage that needs additional screening and a more sensitive detection system, although some passengers could experience hiccups with items as small as uh, hair clips triggering the system. What's TSA clear? What does that get you? I don't do know. Mean? There's, I, 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 It's similar to pre-check. I think they're one and the same. Yeah, they're, they're two different services, and some airports lean more heavily on clear and some have TSA. I think, Nick, that I've heard recently that more airports are going to lean towards TSA pre-check. Okay. And so clear is uh, like the secondary one. Well, here's the, here's the clear is offered uh, through a private company. So. Yeah. Yeah. Pre-check is offered through the government and clear is offered through private company. Okay. All right. All right. Um, listen, we got to wrap up. Unfortunately, I'm sorry. I just noticed at the mm-hmm. clock that uh, we have T.J. Miller coming up clock at nine. Wall says we got to wrap up. Thank you, Mr. Announcer. So we'll come back with T.J. Miller in just a moment or two, and uh, we'll see what's up in his world because he's got a new comedy album out. We'll be back in just a moment. Stay with us. Back on 93.3 WMMR. I honestly never knew we had a, a road called Neck Road in our area. <laughs> no. I guess we do. Every once in a while, she'll come up with a road like, that's, <laughs> that's here? <laughs> Something pops up. What? Hey, we've had the distinct pleasure of having our next guest in the studio on many of occasions. We love him to death. He is joining us via Zoom today, though, because he is promoting his new comedy album, which is called Smooth Peanut Butter. Oh, he knows about that. Please welcome T.J. Miller yeah. to the show. T.J., morning, man. Hello. Good morning. How are you guys? Awesome. Thank you for having me on. Our pleasure. By the way, peanut butter. Neck road. And neck road. <laughs> <I know. laughs> uh, peanut butter for breakfast since it's early in the morning. It's got me thinking about this. I, I'm i a fan of peanut butter on toast or peanut butter even on like a bagel or something like that. Or, oh, even the best actually be an English muffin. I would, are you a peanut butter breakfast guy, TJ? I am a I am a butter and peanut butter on English muffin breakfast guy for sure. And then growing up, I'm glad you brought this up. I haven't talked about this in a long time. My mother used to make me, I think in part because I didn't want to wake up. But when I was going to junior high and you know school age, um, she would do a waffle sandwich, and that was two Eggo waffles with peanut butter, sort of in a circular 
area in the middle was sort of empty and she would put syrup in what? that middle area, making a little like pool of syrup, put the two waffles together. And it was a mobile sandwich to eat on the way to that's, class. That's so genius. Great. So the peanut butter was like a sealant and would hold the uh, syrup. Get out of here. Your mom's yeah, a I mean, genius. I, I don't know how to say. I guess the peanut butter would be a reverse moat. <laughs> and then the center was sort of syrup that couldn't get out from under the peanut butter. But it was pretty good. Sometimes it would leak and that would be a difficult day for me because the girls would wonder why my pants were sticky. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I will tell you this. With your incredible um, uh, skills as far as this kind of food goes, I've been watching, I'm a fan on the History Channel of uh, the food that fed America and the creation of everything from like the pop tart or whatever on and on and on. Yeah, uh, it sounds like your abilities uh, came from your mother when it comes to food innovation. You're right. The origin, I guess, of my obsession with foodstuffs and food innovation did come from Dr. Leslie Miller uh, <laughs> being so lazy about breakfast and me waking up so late. <laughs> and I think that's right. Sometimes necessity is the mother invention. In this case, I necessitated food that it could be taken out of the uh, house within 30 seconds. <laughs> so, yeah, you're absolutely right about that. And I, I am. I, you guys can tell now I am very much obsessed with peanut butter. <laughs> And this all comes from the audio album is um, from a performance that I did in Nashville, Tennessee. And it's got a very, uh, I mean, the joke from the, the title is from the fact that I think it's very strange when you meet somebody who only likes smooth peanut butter. They only eat creamy peanut butter. They don't like crunch. I say, I don't think people like that. First of all, they're psychos. And second of all, I just, I think that they're not prepared for the challenges they're going to face in life. Wow. You, you're I'm saying some crunchy peanut butter. it indicates sort of a lazy sort of uh, immature approach to life if you are a smooth peanut butter fan and only smooth. Yeah, I think that's a strange way of going about life. Yeah. And so <laughs> this album is sort of ironically titled uh, because I'm a crunchy peanut butter guy all the way. And then it's just a really fun kind of, I don't know, smoothly put together mix of me improvising and messing around with, you know, the audience, but also doing some uh, some stories and some... Uh, you know, just some pandemic era material. The story that I love so much from it is, um, uh, and I have a bunch of sort of autobiographical stories, but I was in college and I had a Razor scooter. Okay? Yes. Yeah. You know what those are? Those are the foldable, they're not electric, but they're the foldable scooters. And I was the only one that had one. I was like, why does anybody else have one of these? They thought it was so cool. I could leave for class a minute or two before it started. I could do a couple tricks on it. I thought, oh, my gosh, I'm so, so cool with this thing. Why aren't other people getting... And then I was at a party, and I saw this really cute girl, and I walked up to her, and I said, um, hey, you're... I just wanted to introduce myself to you. I'm TJ. And she goes, oh, yeah, you're the Razor Scooter guy. And that was the last time I ever <laughs> rode a Razor Scooter. <laughs> and so it's, yeah. just, it's fun stories like that that are really... And it's a full-length album. It's my first time doing an album. That's wild. On a sort of comedy label. And and so it's. I'm excited that maybe some young aspiring comedians will hear this album and think, well, maybe I, because that's what happened for me with the Steve Martin albums and all that stuff. So. I'm, I'm, I'm happy you're doing an, an audio album per se, because I do miss the day of the comedy album. I still mm -hmm. will from time to time go and find some comedians that have their live shows on Spotify and just listen to them in that way. It just reminds me of how I used to consume comedy back in the day. And there's something charming about it, just hearing the voice alone. And I love your crowd work, man. Yes. I, there was there was a uh, video of you that popped up randomly on my YouTube algorithm, and it, and it was you. And there was a, a guy who was wearing cargo shorts, and you were going to kind of have some fun with him. And it turns out the guy had, like, an intellectual disability or something. And you just you pivoted so nicely, and you just tell the crowd, you're like, I... I'm not going to make fun of this man. And you had everybody. It was it was so, you know, it, it's great. And, and you know, it's walking on a tight wire when, when you go to the crowd, but... For sure. It's the way you roll, right? Absolutely. And that was a really interesting moment because everything you said is exactly what happened. 
and you could feel the crowd was like, uh -oh. I think this has become my most famous clip because yeah, yeah the crowd's like, uh, what's going to happen? Because he gives this long explanation of why he wears cargo pants but doesn't keep any cargo. Yeah, right. And yeah, I just, it was a great moment for me because yeah. it was funny and it was a pivot, but also it kind of reminded the audience, like, I'm a good dude. Like, I'm here to make everybody happy and have fun, not make fun of anybody. And uh, there's some great crowd work and smooth peanut butter. And there's also just like, it's that buoyancy that I like so much in, uh, in you know, in, in comedy. And you're right about the album. It's like, it's a different way to consume. It's now on Sirius XM and Apple streaming and Spotify and everywhere. Um, but I, I also will listen to some albums of people that I like, also older comedy albums, but, you know, newer comedy albums, for whatever reason, yeah, just hearing the audio is really interesting. There's something about not watching and just hearing it that I think is really cool. It's bereft it does of, harken back to another day, but it, still, it's cool. Yeah, it's bereft of, of, of distraction. And so what, what happens is at least, or you're, you're processing it and you're listening to the words, you're listening to everything, uh, the, the people who I consider, you know, who, you one of them, who have the ability to really create it, like David Tell, I was just listening to David Tell's um, album, so yeah, and yep. uh, and and Greg Giraldo, the late Greg Giraldo. Uh, these guys yeah, were just so so, so good. But you're right; it used to be the thing. I remember as eager as I was for a band to release an album, I would be for my favorite comedians to release an album. So yeah, this is something that needs to be kept alive because it's a cool way to consume this. And a lot of people listen to comedy, especially yeah. because of Sirius XM. It's just a lot of people are in the car yeah. and they just want to hear something that makes them laugh. And I just want to stop and back up and say, you using the word bereft was not only impressive, <laughs> but I think the type of vocabulary you should be screaming out the window on neck row. Okay? On okay. Neck row. Really get that in there and make sure you know that. I appreciate Well, look at you. Road. You're sitting here in, in, a, in a very well-stocked <laughs> library. There's, there seems to be a lot behind you. You're a, a well-read man. This is just... This is this is just a background. I, I, <laughs> you pull it down. down. It's a poster. Yeah, it's like, I went like this, but ripped down. So that's kind of what it is. Yeah. Yeah. When we were kids, yeah, we would go, go to Sears and they would take a picture way, with the background like that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. If you go this way, it's all liquor bottles, and this way, it's just jars of marijuana. So there you yeah, go. This, uh, yeah. Right here, it's just that poster. It's just that image. So I, I'm definitely going to get uh, obviously the uh, the album, and it is called Smooth Peanut Butter. Um, and uh, uh, in addition, obviously, you're, 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 uh, you're a flurry of activity constantly. What besides stand-up? Uh, what are you working on? You do a ton of um, animated uh, voiceover stuff and, and, and uh, movie work. What, what, what is next in the queue that's got you very excited? Well, the thing that makes me laugh is I also sell peanut butter <laughs> yes, on yeah, Amazon.com. Yeah. You could buy my three flavors of peanut butter, toffee, crispy, dark chocolate, coconut, and cherry chocolate with real dried cherries. That's all good but stuff. But the biggest thing that I'm working on, I'm doing two things right now that I'm excited about. One is a Christmas movie that I'm writing with a buddy of mine that um, we've got a great producer. It's very exciting. He's like a very high-level producer. And then uh, he did, you know, he's Seth MacFarlane's main guy. Ah. So that's really exciting. And then, and that's going to be a full-length feature Christmas film that's PG-13 and for the whole family. So I'm really, really excited about that. And then um, I have this project that I did a long time ago called Gore Burger. And it's just this crazy puppetry, <laughs> animatronic, almost like a Chuck E. Cheese's character, but he's from another planet. And he takes over a Japanese morning show and kills <laughs> half of the staff and enslaves the other half to have his own interview show. And so we were going to do that as a video podcast. But Viacom didn't want to let us have Gorberger back. So we're building a new puppet that is Gorberger's nephew that he sent to Earth to continue his work because Gorberger is trapped in another dimension by the evil empire Ziacom. <laughs> and so, so we're kind of finding our way to do that. So that'll be a really fun video podcast. And that's going to be with Sirius XM, I think, or maybe with the media company that did Smooth Peanut Butter. So those are really fun because I've always loved puppets. And this was so cool that the Gore Burger, you can look it up. There's, we have a full season on Comedy Central and it's on YouTube, G-O-R Burger, Gore Burger. I'll check that and out. It's, there's, there's a man inside of this giant puppet. And then through ro remote control, I control his mouth and his expressions. And two other puppeteers do his eyes and his eyebrows. 
So it's crazy. And we had Jack Black on and Queens of the Stone Age and Tegan and Sarah. We have had some crazy, amazing oh, how uh, did I miss this? guests on this show. Yeah. Um, because it's very esoteric. But okay. if you if you Google it right now, you'll see. I mean, it looks he looks crazy. I mean, he's so funny. Gorberger. So we're gonna All do right. kind of a an a nephew, almost a smaller version of it as a video podcast. Because that's the thing, there's so many video podcasts out there, so many. And they are all becoming kind of the same. It's comedians interviewing other comedians. Exactly. Exactly. And so we want to. So we want to do something where it's an animatronic puppet that sometimes vomits when he gets really excited, <laughs> and you know, do do something like that where he interviews all kinds of people, musicians, comedians, pop culture icons, anything like that. I so think. I'm, very excited about that. It's kind of up your alley. No, it's yeah. absolutely up our alley. And we've said that many times. There's so many podcasts and, and it becomes incestuous. They all interview each other about the same stories and it becomes white noise at a certain point. So actually creating content, yeah. go figure, is something I think that's going to rise to the top. I think so. And it's just visually it's going to look so bizarre and different. Yeah. You know? So that's really fun. And isn't it funny that I say that because... Here we are talking about how audio is such a cool way to consume comedy. <laughs> and then I think on the flip side of that, if we're doing visual things, it needs to be different. It yeah. needs to be something new, something that pops, and that's definitely what this will be. Right. If you have any ideas, we're still trying to come up with the name of the creature. All right. Goreburger. We're so thinking it's about Goreburger's it. nephew? Goreburger's nephew. Okay. So it's got to be something like Tregor. <laughs> Uh, Quirpy was one that was being thrown Quirpy. around with the writers. Yeah, yeah. All, All right, right. Well, we'll, we'll yeah. send you, you guys some think stuff. about it. All, All right. right. Well, listen. Yeah, we know you got to you got to keep things short today. But listen, qu last question: um, Will you be touring, and will you make your way through Philly sometime this year? Maybe do you think? Of course, yeah. I, I, okay. It's either going to be at the end of the year or the beginning of next year. But I'm excited to go back to the punchline. Yeah. And I am upset that the Kansas City Chiefs. We're not trounced. I'm not a 49ers <laughs> fan, but I'm still upset about that holding call, and I'm not going to let it go. Don't let All it go. Right. All right. G L E F. <laughs> Perfect. All right. And come by and visit us, TJ, when you're in town. It's good to talk to you, man. Of we'll course. see you. All right. Good TJ Miller, you. guys. Yeah. Smooth peanut butter. It's available on all platforms Apple, Spotify, Amazon, all that good stuff. So, so you, by the way, the English muffin peanut butter thing. I oh, love it. And, and you know why it's love so good? It. Out of the toaster, you put that peanut butter on. And, you, and it starts to melt a little bit. And it settles into the crannies. It settles into the nooks and the crannies. Nooks and crannies. More elusive yeah. than your nook is your cranny. I, uh, so where do you guys stand on the uh, peanut butter that you have to stir up uh, with the, when the oil separates? I'm not mad at it because a lot of the... Um, a lot of the, f um, the, the Preservatives and stuff? Right. Um, so, uh, but I, the funny thing is I'm just as good with cheap crap peanut right. butter. <laughs> You know? There was uh, our friend, uh, comedian uh, Greg Warren, I heard him, he was on with uh, Mike Birbiglia and they were talking about it and, and uh, he had asked Mike about, you know, the stirring of the peanut butter and, and Mike goes, no, nah, I don't mind at all. And he goes, "You, it, it bothers you? And, and Greg goes, oh, so what, Mike, now I have to make the peanut butter? <laughs> <laughs> I just love that line. So now anytime that I have to go and stir up my peanut butter, I'm like, I'm making the peanut butter. I always remember uh, hating that peanut butter though as a kid, like we would be so mad yeah. when my mom got the peanut butter they had to stir the oil right um but if you just do the the crust like literally just the crushed up peanuts uh from like, like i get it from whole foods yeah it's you don't have to worry about the oil and all that stuff right oh. it's not as good though i don't think yeah I, I don't i think it's i like it i you know what though it's it you're, you've gotten used to you it. get used to it if yeah. that's all you eat that's it like to me it's just as delicious as the regular peanut butter do you know what i and again so i do love the i the uh you know the the the, the healthier stuff and as you said the ground up peanuts and all that Standard stuff, but that old crappy jelly and peanut butter combo Mix? in a jar. Oh, gosh. Oh, goobers. Yeah. oh goobers. Yeah, goobers. goobers. Yeah, yeah. And it's it just. I didn't like those. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I you like to, that. I used to hate it. Yeah, and I had and a little like bit. It? Of, I'm like, it's not so bad. <laughs> it's not so bad. Yeah, I get. Uh, we get ours from Cape uh, May Peanut Butter Company, and uh, they make uh, like honey roasted peanut butter and. Mm. To, uh, um, butterscotch, peanut butter, stuff like that. It's so, good. And, it's, and technically, like, it, it's a good protein source. It's good for you, but it's effing high in calories. Very high in Very calories. Very high. Yeah. Well, is it always high in calories if they don't add a ton of sugar? Because, like, yeah. the, the, yes. the Jif and the Skippy, 
there's a lot of sugar in those, but um, yeah, regular, even any type of nut you nuts. have to be careful yeah. with. You can't eat calories. these nuts. These nuts are right. very really? high in calories. Especially your no, but, own. no, but you're right. Uh, no, nut any any kind of nut like walnuts, uh, pecans, uh, whatever. You have, white they're, macadamia they're like nuts. White <laughs> pine nuts. And, no, but they are way high calorically because yeah. I guess there's a lot of oil in them. Uh, It'd be like hell, arugula being high in calories. It's like it's supposed yes. to be good for you. Come on, man. Uh, but anyhow, enjoy your peanut butter today, folks. And actually, yeah, he does. Uh, T.J. Miller has his brand of peanut butter and like hot sauces and stuff. He has, like a, that. He has a diet hot. He dabbles sauce. in that. Listen, I didn't want to ask him this because he was because I didn't know if it was a sore point or not. I assume he's not in the new Deadpool movie. They sort of not not that they they. I was you know we could have asked obviously, but I haven't heard anything about it or seen him in it. Yeah. Do you remember that it was? And we asked him when he was here in, in the uh, studio the last time. There had been supposedly this friction. That he he brought up a, an interaction with Ryan Reynolds, and Ryan Reynolds la later apologized for it, and they were oh. on set, and TJ was was Im improvising, and um, and uh, so Ryan Reynolds was like, I don't even remember doing that. I'm sorry if I did that, and it was always good. Right. But I wonder if yeah that. Okay, maybe, maybe I don't need that in the third one. Which is too bad because his character's awesome in the movies. He's great. I'm thinking, and the word is, um, you know, that uh, this is, and, and uh, uh, comic book gurus, uh, t, uh, you know, uh, 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 Craig Legans and uh, the rest of the crew there say that this is actually a great, this is the, the re this is going to be the Iron Man, the foundational movie for the next run at the Avengers and um, you it's know, setting the, everything up for the next setting phase. everything up will okay. be is all resting on the shoulders of Deadpool. We'll see if it takes, but <laughs> if the, he's got the you know Ryan Reynolds has got the magic touch. Yeah, and that that movie would not have gotten made at least the version the way he did it, not you know Wolverine Origins, uh, if if he had not really pushed hard to yeah. get that wanting, sample film done. Yeah. yeah, and wanting to do it the wanting way to do he it the wanted right to. Way, yeah. yeah. All right, so, well, we shall see. Hey, uh, I wanted to ask uh, Nick something. So you had mentioned that your son just took his SATs. Yeah, a lot of kids took them on Saturday. On Saturday, this this was the weekend that it happened yeah, for most so, people? Yeah, and uh, there are several dates, and you can sign up for a bunch, and he's gonna he's already signed up for the next one for him anyway, we'll, which will be in June. Um, he took the PSATs uh, last year, and then he took the SATs this year, and uh, there's a few format changes, and he was explaining some of it to me, but um, the, the two of the most notable, ones are uh there's only two sections now for for a stretch there were three when i was in high school there was two there was just verbal and math and then they expanded and it had a written version of it as well so you, the best degree you could get was 2400 anyway it's back to uh 1600 1600 yeah and um and so it was math and verbal but most of it or i'm sorry all of it for him was online so it's interesting because uh essentially they can get you your score right away they know exactly how well you've done or not but they still make you wait two weeks to get the SATs back. So I remember years ago, you would take it, you were advised to take it twice, which I did. Um, and I did do better on the second round. I forget what my score was. But um, long story short, that was it. It was on the uh, it was on the Saturdays. You went in and then you would take the... Um, uh, well, you weren't taking a practice. Uh, uh, so the PSAT is, is specifically... That's the college board um, right. version of a practice SAT. And then you can take a right. supplemental... Um, courses in order to like practice for the actual SATs, which Ben has also done over the last uh, month, month and a half or whatever. Um, and he wants to do really well. I believe he probably will end up doing He's well. He's probably going to get a perfect score, well, honestly. He, that's what his goal is. <laughs> um, he can probably get a goal, a, a perfect score in math. He, like that's how well he does in math. But he said that this time, and I, the other thing that I didn't know is that they make them uh, each section progressively more difficult. Ah. So the first section in math, he's fairly certain he got all of them right. And then they get much, it got much more difficult, much more quickly, quickly than he expected them to. I didn't realize they'd added a third chunk. Um, so, they, you know, I, I go way back. I go back to when they used to have us take, did you guys have to take the Iowa achievement tests? I yeah, think that I was, that was that. different. That was for, in New York, did you do yeah, it? Yeah, we had to take yeah, the I Iowa. That. And we took the Regents tests. Uh, which was another whole series of tests. So they were testing the crap out of us. Yeah, there was. We had different standardized tests. I know. I remember my cousins in New York always taking those. Like you bastards! Why are we getting all these tests? And why? Why does Ohio, Why does Iowa have to recognize me as an achiever? But Nick, the. Uh Twenty four hundred back to sixteen hundred. That happened a while ago, didn't it? It did, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. And so uh, it's just uh, the best score you can get now is sixteen hundred with just the two tests. There are two um, 
uh, sections of the SATs. Which well, is what we what we did. Right. What are the two sections? Math. Verbal and math. Verbal and math. Yeah. And then what was it when they were three? Written. Verbal, math, and written. Oh like essays. God. Oh, write. that was... That's the one that I was I was most listen. I don't remember what my scores were, uh, but uh, I remember the the written thing. I was like, just just hang me yeah. now, just shoot me oh, now. See, forget and that's, it. That's what I was good at. I would prefer them to give me something to write than have to that you could be as. <laughs> well, I no, yeah. I just was. I was a good writer. Good writer, like, yeah, I, yeah. And even in college, like the majority of my classes were um, fortunately writing. I could, I mean, I could whip out a 20 page paper in oh like my God. No, in no time. I couldn't do it in a year. But if you gave me a standardized test where it was question and answer, I did like a, a long one, like SATs, I did terrible. Years ago, uh, when my brother was, my older brother Gene was uh, focused more on being a teacher and then he eventually went into the army and secret service and so on and so forth. But one of the things he focused in on studying was the efficacy of test taking and whether it tests your actual working knowledge or whether it or not it tests your ability to take a test. Oh, I, I killed yeah. it on the SATs. Yeah. I got one wrong in math. Yeah, my math what? score. Yeah, it was a seven eighty. Yeah, and that's how well I did in math, and I'm I'm fairly certain my son can get a, a perfect score in the math version, math part of the SATs. I was a terrible college student. Yeah. You know, so like I was great at test taking and especially standard, standardized tests, but that did not equate at all to me being a good college student because I, I guess what? I didn't go to class. So my, 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 I was the, the, the opposite. I was, my grades were great. My test taking, well, tests like that, not that I did badly, but I, you would not know from my, my test results that way, what my grades were. The you other know? thing that uh, I was a little surprised by was that um, they're allowed to bring calculators in now. What? Yeah, yeah. So, like, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and then uh, so let me ask you, the online component, because there had been this element of, of cheating. I remember they, 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 it was in the news a couple of times about... Um, about uh, the, the, the having to uh, retake the test. That's part of the reason why there's the delay in getting the scores back because they want they can find ways um, that kids might be cheating. So the two week oh. delay in getting the scores, Steve, is to try to detect if any cheating took place. And if they are discovered, if there is some sort of so systemic cheating going on, I assume they would be required to take the test again. Probably. Um, when he took the PSAT, and Kathy and I were talking about this a little bit, there was a this weird glitch that happened with a lot of students around the country. So he was about like 10, 15 minutes into taking the PSATs again. This was last year. And uh, basically they stopped because there was a problem with this online version of a test. See, it was like when they just released released the electronic version, they had an issue. And some, fortunately, um, uh, Ben, they just canceled it. And, right. and so they stopped the test taking. And that happened for a lot of students. But some of them got through the test and then their scores were not recorded. So they ended up having to take it again. Wow. Man, Could that you? sucks. No. I tell you what, though, I, they, they used to, I remember in school, when calculators first became a thing, Preston, you remember way back, Texas oh. Instrument Calculators, if if you bring a calculator into math class, I'll <laughs> fail you on the spot. And now they're allowed to take them into but the I, test. Nick, I thought we were allowed to use calculators. Like it remember. would have to be a specific calculator. You're a lot younger than me, so I can't remember. I am yeah. so much younger than yeah. you, so I think my year we did use calculators. <laughs> uh, I hate education. <laughs> oh my god! I mean. Uh, I, you hate no, formalized education. I, I do. And and listen, and, and I know this makes no sense, <laughs> what I'm about to say. So like uh, Casey, one of, uh, Casey's oldest, uh, Casey, was uh, uh, is looking at college and, and he was telling me where it's some potential full ride offers mm -hmm. that she's being made. And I'm like, man, you know what? You're already smart. Yeah. You're already smart. <laughs> and and they're going to let you come to, they're going to charge every, they're going to charge the stupid people and the I smart people. I need things, I'm smart. Have to, you get it for free. You're already smart. Yeah. I need the help. I need the help, help over me. here. <laughs> I'm stupid. So you're against merit-based scholarships. <laughs> Not really. Oh, I mean, okay. I, I, but I. It, it's He's kinda, in favor of looks I'm like, based. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like, oh, oh man, really? golf base. What about That's golf? No base? fair. You can get a golf, golf scholarship. Based. I heard ding 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 ding. <laughs> yeah, golf scholarships exist. Yeah, yeah they, they do. do. But but uh, do no. you think you could? You think years ago? What if you were playing? Do you, I think if I would have learned... Do you think uh, you the, could have gone to school on a golf scholarship? If, if I would have taken formal lessons and had been trained properly and not have the mistakes that are ingrained in me, I think I could have been a halfway decent 
golfer and maybe have gotten a scholarship. Do you think right somewhere? now people would be listening to Chuck D'Amico and Steve? <laughs> <laughs> Chuck we and Steve has a ring to it. Yeah. <laughs> Chuck and Steve. It's better, than, it's better than Weston and Steve. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty good. Uh, no, but I was such a horrible student. I, there was never, ever, 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 ever any thought that I would uh, continue. Well, no, I, there was a slight thought that I might continue my education after high school. But Yeah, but you're actually smart. So had you applied and had you liked it, you probably would have been like Ben and Casey. Maybe not just applied. Maybe now that they have different ways of teaching, of teaching. Uh, yeah. kids who have... Um, Certain dumbness. issues. Well, yeah, or yeah. or at attention deficit, and, and there are uh, better ways that you learn. Some people learn visually. Some people learn uh, with audio, and, and they now... And it helps, it, yeah. It, it, it legitimately does help. helps, and I think a lot of people fell through the cracks because of that. Certainly. But, but you know what? The educators were learning, too. They didn't... I they, was they're mildly... learning how to teach as we, as people evolve... It's, it's just how it works. So you I don't, don't blame the system because they didn't know what to do back then. They hadn't learned about it yet. Yeah, you're exactly right. I was you know? mildly dyslexic. Um, and so that, but yet I I, I still, um, you know, I'm sure there'll be some movie about how I overcame <laughs> my mild dyslexia. Right. Well, <laughs> both of you guys like uh, audiobooks a lot, right? And yes. part of the reason why is because, Steve, you, you know, you referenced a, a little bit of dyslexia. Yeah. Andrea, my, my fiance, is the same way. Like, she prefers listening to books because she couldn't read them as well. And it's not yeah. because she's stupid. It's because there's a bit of a, a um, misfunction when happen, you know, when, when reading and it's dyslexic. So do you, do you know what though, Nick? And it's weird. You talk about the, 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 the nuances in, in, in how you process information. Yeah. Technical things I can read pretty effortlessly and, and I'll, I'll, I'll be able to, okay, got this, got this, got that. When I'm, when I'm reading a, a, uh, a work of fiction or Dune, yeah. like I told you, when I, when I first read Dune, uh, I, it was years ago, but thank God someone had taken the time to put together the glossary of Dune, the book that is that gives you, because there's so many things you have to remember, and that made the experience, like I, as with The Lord of the Rings, someone had taken the time to put together a glossary of names, and I needed that, but it made it so much more enjoyable because... You know, there's a lot to process, as you well know. Yeah. And, and there, there are certain things that if, if it's not explained along the way, then just forget it. I, I, I'm i never going to retain it. We were sitting down with our financial planner a couple of weeks oh, ago. Get it. And Rochelle's absorbing all yeah. of this. And we're about 20 minutes into it. And uh, our, our guy goes, so, uh, Press, how you doing on this? I go, I have no effing idea what you guys are talking about. <laughs> I, do I, just, know, like, I have no idea. I do know that when a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I, uh, so, yes. How many minutes in did you check out? Oh, it was like 10 minutes in. Okay. I mean, not to all of it, but to some, once you start using industry terms, and I'm like, what does that mean again? Yeah. <laughs> and then you compile a couple of other industry terms on top of that, then I'm gone. If, if you, so, I ha so if you are... It, if you're excited by something, yeah. if you are, you know, Kubrick said this years ago, if you could find everything ahead of time that is going to excite a student, yeah. it'd be like nuclear energy being released. Absolutely. But the, the problem is, not the problem, but you have to sample many things to find out what excites you. That's part of what high school is. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, they're, they're throwing a lot of crap at you and, and, seeing, a look. If it, yeah. and seeing if any of it sticks, you know. But unfortunately, there's a grade for all of it that you end up getting. Ben was saying uh, that um, he really had no problem focusing on the math portion of the SATs at all. But when it came to the verbal, he could find he he found himself uh, losing focus. And so he tricked his own brain into recognizing that he's losing focus and using that Loss of focus to refocus. Like, does mm -hmm. that make sense? Like, he, yeah, he, he yeah. sees that. Oh no, my god, it's a higher level of thinking. I'm not paying attention anymore. I really need, but like, especially at that Steve, time in the test, Nick, I was eating my eraser. Well, <laughs> it's a time test, right? So you only have so much time in order to complete the entire section. Yeah, and you can, if, for example, the math section that he did, where he killed it in the first part of it, he ha he finished it in like. 10 minutes, and it's a half hour long. So he's able to go back and recheck all of his answers. The later portions of the test were much more difficult. He didn't have enough time to finish all of it. Mm. Yeah, if you have some some markers of where if you if you notice you're doing something, then it's time to, to refocus, yeah. to, to reel it in. And that's half the battle. I right used there. a marker to write the answers under the tape. <laughs> <laughs> that's a way to do it. That's one way that I did it. Uh, <laughs> and then also just was saying, uh, oh, wondering man. where the word proctor came from. I had a great way of cheating uh, in my biology class when I was in high school. And because we sat, uh, some people sat at desks and then others sat at lab tables. And the lab tables had uh, drawers on it. Yeah. Okay. And so if you sit, yes. I, there was, and I knew it, and I sat in the same spot every time. And so the day before, I took a little cheat sheet and I put it in the drawer. 
And the when the teacher, I would just slide the drawer open and look down. <laughs> <laughs> I figured out uh, eventually that when I would make my cheat sheets, that's how I would learn a lot the of people do. Yeah, a lot yeah. of people have found that that in preparing for cheating, they're actually learning the it, lesson. It, it, it's just it's it's weird, but for some reason, the titillation of thinking, okay, that I'm this is my system. But yeah, you are learning. Yeah. Uh, the, the, I remember when I took Kathy the Regents tests in mm -hmm. New York. So you had these Regents study guides. Well, there's only so many ways you can ask a certain question. And basically, <laughs> I studied the questions, you know, in the Regents Guide, and those were the exact questions that ended up on the test. Oh, they were? So, like, it's like watching Jeopardy and then watching it with friends after you've already watched it and dazzling them, <laughs> you know? Uh, See, I, I was never good at those because I, I would have to learn, like, the exact information. I need, like, and I would write it down. I would yeah. write down a word and the exact definition. So I knew exactly what it was. Mm. So, and those tests, there's so much information that you sort of have to, like, just remember things that, that that you weren't, you know, studying the night before. That's And I think that's why I was never good at it. So writing was your, uh, that was your, your best yeah. attribute. And cooking. What about, um, did you do creative writing? Did you like come up with stories or did you do any no, of that? It, no, this was more like communication writing, you know, okay. like like different papers about, you know, different types of communications. I and bet you'd be good at some cause creative writing was my thing that that was, you know, um, I would write. That was my my my, my jam. Yeah. So uh, but uh, I, I bet, you know, you could I bet you have enough. So you're a creative, a creative person. I think you could do quite well at that. Yeah, it's just not what I did in college. I did like a lot of we did research papers and things like that. Okay. Kathy, did you have any friends in high school or know anybody in college that took the ACTs instead of the SATs? Oh, I do remember that. I, I, I don't know. S I took ACTs, did you? I think. Yeah. So I it was forgot a, why. It was but... a, well, it was a different standardized test that um, some colleges accepted over the SATs or they accepted both. And if you you would do well in the ACTs. You could dismiss your SAT score. I took the see you next Tuesdays. Right. And, uh, <laughs> sure. Very, very nasty. God, by the time college rolled around, I was just done. I was just done. I'm like, I didn't want to do homework anymore. Working at uh, the bookstore for the years that I did, they had an entire aisle of test guides, ACT, LSAT, um, every sort of GMATs. all of them, yeah. Nick, for, for legal, for medical, for everything. I'm like, oh, my God, that's a level of school Man. that would just kill me. I remember my my friends who were going to go to med school or thinking about law school when I was in college. And again, I was a terrible college student, but they were studying like for the MCATs and stuff like that. And they they had to do well on the MCATs while trying to, you know, finish college and oh. graduate and whatever. It, it just was. God. It, yeah. To me, that, that that's brain when I capacity. checked up. I know. What about the, uh, the, 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 was it, she a Nickelodeon star or who is? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah from, like from uh, Good Luck Charlie. I was yeah, telling you guys about like that. four she separate went, degrees. She went to MIT and Harvard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and is now creating this uh, ground communication for satellites. That's right. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Some people just have a lot and of brain. She was starting on a show called Sniff My Fart. Brain. <laughs> Sniff <laughs> my, my fart. fart. Why did uh, you take part in that? What? I can't, I'm Steve disappointed in you. I'm so <laughs> disappointed How in dare you. I noticed how you nodded approvingly, Kathy, though. <laughs> Hang on. For those of you not watching YouTube. Just close your eyes and pretend like it didn't happen. I want to, yeah, you know, how it shields your eyelids. Not, not I, I, I can Hang still on. hear you. I'm going to go to Alex, uh, who is going to uh, mention something about the SATs. Hey, Alex, good morning. Alex, hi, you, hi, you're on the air, Alex. Go ahead. Hi, this is Robin. Actually. Oh, Robin. Oh. Well, they call you Alex for short. Okay, Robin, yeah, what's no up? No worries. Um, so I wanted to share a mnemonic device with you all. No. Oh. Before I was going to take my SATs, um, somebody told me a long time ago, and I never forgot it. And now you guys will never forget it. Okay. And what so, uh, what subject is this? It's in math. Okay. Okay. So you know the Pussycat Dolls song, "Don't You Wish Your Boyfriend Was Hot Like Yes, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So don't you wish circumference was pi times d? Don't you? <laughs> <laughs> don't you wish circumference was pi <laughs> times b? <laughs> D yes, don't times you. D. Good. Diameter. Diameter. Yeah. Oh my God. Pi that's times great. diameter, and that it equals <laughs> is circumference to the pussycat dolls. Got it. Sorry. Oh. So one formula. You that's one. <laughs> Any others? What about the rest? Uh, oh, no, that's it. That's <laughs> just, that. Right. just that. Thank you, Robin. The theory of relativity. Appreciate my mom. Yeah. My mom was great with that stuff. Like if there were there were things that I couldn't remember, like I said, I needed to know it exactly. So if there were things that I couldn't remember, she would come up with, you know, like my dear Aunt Sally, stuff like that. She would she would do that 
for me on whatever it was that she was quizzing me on and I couldn't remember. So I had all these like, I, for whatever reason, I remember apples being something for... Uh, I, I remember one specifically and it was for, it was in biology and it was for... Um, uh, genes when they um, multiply, when they okay. uh, uh -huh. the, the phases they go through, and it's I prefer my ants toasted, and it's uh, interphase, prophase, um, uh, and metaphase, antiphase, and telophase. Wow! Ah. And so I do remember that those <clears throat> are the phases of the genes as they. Uh, but that was like split. Th is that known? The colors like, are people, the spectrum. People it, know that, right? I don't right. know. It's what I was told. Oh, you so. were, okay. That's what I say. My mom would make she it make them up. up. It okay. wasn't one that was taught in school and. I would remember it. My Aunt Sally gives gum jobs to no, syphilitic <laughs> Samoans. <laughs> to the who? Syphilitic Samoans. Syphilitic what is it? Samoans. My, my dear Aunt Sally, what? I don't know what we're talking about. Oh. <laughs> Takes it from behind with little resistance. Hold on. That's how you, that's, that's about. With little oh, resistance. Ohms. What's that one from? It's ohms. electricity. Oh, yeah. resistance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's parentheses, exponents, multiplication, uh, division, addition, subtraction. Okay. And that's the order in which you can apply these. Uh, yes. Yeah. All right. I got you. My, uh, please, yeah. What's please the Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. That's what it oh, is. Oh, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Yeah. She's been incontinent since the age of 50. <laughs> <laughs> please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Parentheses. Exponents. Exponents. Multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. So it's the order in which you solve the problem. How are you guys at base num base numerals? Do you remember that whole thing? Base oh, 10? Yeah. All that? I was good at it. I mean, yeah. like, I, I that was stuff where I could memorize it, and it it does nothing for me at this point uh, in my life. So, and, and there's there's a that's a so I, that was anything linear, <laughs> which is not the way I think. Yes, yes, Preston. I, I, I have a <laughs> question. Yeah. question. Uh, with the base numbers, so that means that you could multiply in different bases, Nick. Uh, yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. And uh, but I mean, honestly, like. I haven't used it since college, so I don't I don't remember how to apply it anymore. Okay. Right, the base of a number system refers to the total number of digits digits that are current uh, that are actually sorry that are actually used in a given number system. So do you know why we? I've told you guys this before. Why we are we use base ten? Oh, because of our fingers. Our fingers. Right? Ten yeah, fingers. Yeah. 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 There's a, a book by Andy Weir called, and it, it has to do with meeting aliens, and, and this other alien form uses uh, a base six. That's yeah. right. Six appendages. Yeah. And uh, and I was like, I not me, bro. <laughs> I'm like, it makes total sense. Yeah. yeah. It's easier for us to count on our fingers as we were, uh, you know, evolving. My uncle Slarf dings <laughs> craggles by putrefaction extract. You get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You get it, bro. What was that alien's yeah. name? In the uh... Oh, Rocky. Well, uh, I don't want to I don't want to give away uh, right. uh, a lot on the uh, uh you know, too much about Rocky. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that becomes a known as <laughs> Which, now that I hear it, it doesn't sound so good. Read the book. It's amazing. All right. <laughs> Hang on. Julie has a quadratic equation. Quadratic song. equation. To sing for us. Hi, right. Julie. Good morning. Hi, it's Julie Jerkoff. Julie oh! Jerkoff! We love you. Julie, I don't have the clip. Casey's not here. I don't have it at, uh, okay. at my beck and call. But what's happening? I So about 20 years ago or so uh back in high school i learned a song for the quadratic formula and i'll never forget it for the rest of my life <laughs> let's have it sing away all right x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a <laughs> i love it see that mnemonically that's not uh, that's still sort of awkward, but uh, I guess, yeah, along to the song. Once you sing it. Yeah, yeah. It will. I'll never forget it. It'll yeah. embed. It'll yeah. embed in there. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Julie Jerkoff. Thank you. All right. We'll see you. Deliverance. Why, why did you play that? I was trying to move the clip into it, and I hit oh. the button. Instead. That's the mnemonic device to remember to move the Julie Jerkoff clip. Move the Julie Jerkoff clip. <laughs> Mama, move the Julie Jerkoff clip. And here it is. Julie Jerkoff. There you go. Forgive me, Kirkoff. <laughs> um, when I was a kid, they would actually, for our multiplication tables, they would play, yes. it was on a little 45, songs that essentially sung them. You know, We did that all the time. Times five is? 
25. Five times six is 30. You know, it's like stuff like that. Yeah. And, and you would... And it actually worked. Worked pretty well. I rocked my timetables uh, time pretty quickly. Uh, and then, they, of course, they always had the um, they had them up on the uh, the wall around the uh, mm -hmm. the classrooms. So yeah. you'd have that's when they would still post Preston um, uh, the the uh, um, cursive letters as well. That's how I, I told yeah. you guys. That's why I write them uh, incorrectly. I, I I do my letters incorrectly because I I jumped ahead. Yeah. And I looked at the letters up on the uh, on the around the top of the room, and I would just taught myself to do it. And I taught myself the wrong way, which is the same thing I do with my <laughs> golf swing. <laughs> Which is why you, you hobble now. I just taught myself the wrong way to do it. Uh, interesting. But I just, it just blows me away that your son got a freaking perfect score on his, uh, <laughs> uh, was it the, the PSATs, that PSATs, right? Just, but I mean, dude, it's the same thing. Was the math. He's it, going to be in the ballpark of being perfect on this one, it, too. Yeah. So uh, so are they still carrying the weight? It, 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 it is, does merit matter? It depends on which school you're yeah, going yeah, to. Yeah. Yeah. And so it can, yes. I, I, it has to. Like, how yeah. could... How could it not? But you know the other thing about it's not the, negative about the SAT is not, yeah it's exactly it's yeah. not a, it's not a knock against him. Um, they are graded on a score now, so the, like the difficulty level that he had in especially in math, uh, that's another reason why it takes two weeks for them to get the scores back is because if everybody struggled through one or two sections, uh, they will adjust accordingly. I do remember the kid in my high school though that got the perfect score. Like you remember those people. I knew which one I got wrong, man. It really pissed me off. I wanted to get all of them right. Oh, what was wrong? I don't remember now, but oh, like, and, okay. and when I was in high school and I got only one wrong on the math, I was like, yeah, man, I, I, I should have gotten that one right, too. I remember the year, like, I was a straight-A student, but I got moved around so much that it took its its, uh, its toll on me. Yeah. So I remember, like, I was always the new kid, and um, then my grades just crashed. Nick, if you had almost perfect on your math, to what depth is your math acuity now like how far into it it's I mean, minimal yeah because it like that i don't flex that part of my brain at all anymore right. i bet you if i went back to high school and, and like if i billy madison did and went back and and took my math classes again i'd, I'd be okay but if i took a the math sat today I'd, I'd, I'd do terribly on it like you could you could stop me at fractions right now yeah. like i wouldn't even make it into that like when, i could just the the bare minimum of that and stop, that's it. stop and think about it though uh, we, we live in a world where you can simply ask your phone yeah you just don't in, you in don't, a nanosecond like nick said a perfect right. way to phrase that is exercising that part of your brain yeah. anymore you just don't need yeah. to do it the, though uh, my Some people do my but. the the Part of my brain that controls porn appreciation is, <laughs> is incredibly you're powerful. a road scholar well, that's, and, uh, that's base, too, because uh, computers use binary language. Yeah, that's so, right. Yeah. Yes. Let's keep in mind Zeros the and ones yeah. of all this. There's some math. Yeah. There's math involved in porn. <laughs> Which one relates to cucks? There's innovation when it comes to porn all the time. Like, the advances in technology so solely because of porn is... It, it's, it's, pretty, it's, it's pretty remarkable. Streaming. Yeah. That's why Al Gore invented the internet. That's right. <laughs> All right, well, anyhow, uh, keep us up, uh, abreast of, oh, yeah, yes, yes, yeah, of, uh, of his scores. Two weeks are waiting. We'll get him back. Somebody yeah. texted in and said it's because they have to, there's a curve involved mm. in that, and they have to calculate yeah, all that yeah, stuff. Right, so. yeah. Yeah. All right, we, good luck with everybody who, who went through that or is currently going through that. We are going to take a break. We'll come back in a second. Some bizarre file stories await you right around the corner. So stay put. We'll be back in a moment. I'm 93.3 WMMR. All right, we're going to do Bizarre File Stories. Now, Bizarre. WMMR presents Bizarre. Kristen and Steve's Bizarre. Bizarre File. Brought to you by Dermatology Associates of Plymouth at meeting recruiting for a non-segmental vitiligo study to test an investigational medication. Uh, adults 18 and older can register. Go to Plymouth Meeting Dermatology Dot com. All right, so we had that story out of uh, Camden where the gas is uh, bad, right? Yes. Uh, this is different, involving a gas station in Lincoln, Nebraska, though. Uh, a station has fixed a glitch that had allowed someone to pump thousands of <laughs> gallons of fuel for free. Huh. Dawn Thompson, 45 years old, is charged with one count of theft by unlawful taking. Police said she used an exploit to pump free gas for more than six months. Police got a call from uh, Boselman Enterprises' loss prevention manager. They got word from the pump and pantry. So there was an exploitable issue with the pump. Yep, that someone had been participating in a fuel scam. Police learned that the fuel pumps received a software update 
in November of 2022. The update managed orders and rewards cards, and it was made at the request of customers and staff. Unbeknownst to the company, however, the update was exploitable. It allowed anyone to swipe a rewards card twice to enter the pump into a demo mode. And wow. from there, the user could pump gas for free. So did she find out about this accidentally or has she had, did she have some sort of insight that this would be the case? This story doesn't say anything about that. Huh. I'm guessing it was by accident. By accident, yeah. The loss prevention manager discovered one particular card had been repeatedly used to get free gas. By tracing the card's information, police were able to identify Thompson. Yeah, 6,000 gallons on pump one, please. Uh, video surveillance showed... Thompson pumping fuel into her vehicle on multiple occasions. Police think that fuel was stolen between November 13th and June 20, uh, June 1st. In those months, the rewards card was used 510 times, <laughs> and it was also used multiple times on the days that it was used. So it's estimated that 7,413 gallons of gasoline were pumped during Jeez. those uses. The manager estimates the average fuel cost between those months to be approximately $3.78 per gallon, bringing the total losses of $27,860. insane. Thompson, uh, after a months-long investigation, was arraigned on Thursday. The next court hearing is scheduled for April 11th, but she just kept going back. And what about all those Java points she got for filling up? Yeah, how about that? A Tennessee mother of five died after she had a Brazilian butt lift. Ah, uh -huh. Performed by a Miami doctor who is allegedly not allowed to operate on patients. We according, were just talking about this last week. Yeah, according yeah. to a lawsuit that the Wilson, uh, the woman's family had filed. Erica Russell traveled to Seduction Cosmetic Center's facility in Coral Gables to undergo the cosmetic procedure. During the procedure, her doctor, John Sampson, punctured her liver, her bladder, and her intestines with a cannula, which is a tube primarily used for removing fluid from the body. Jesus. A uh, little over two hours after the procedure began, um, she went into cardiac arrest and just died right there. Oh, my gosh. That's incredibly invasive to uh, get all of that for a butt lift. The lawsuit says her cause of death was determined to be pulmonary fat emboli and bleeding due to liposuction and bilateral glute gluteal augmentation surgery. Yes, uh, by butt lift. Attorneys uh, representing Russell's family said Samson was not allowed to perform surgical procedures at the facility and alleged that Seductive provided Russell with falsified paper paperwork stating that he had plastic and cosmetic privileges at a local hospital when he indeed did not. Mm. Sometimes you just assume. Uh, they also accused uh, Seduction of falsely marketing Samson as a surgeon performing surgery at his facility. So they just... They just falsified all this stuff about That's him. Completely, yeah, illegal. And, and I assume it sounds like they were doing liposuction on her, and then they were going to take that the and fat. transfer that to the butt. That's the only way I can imagine them puncturing all those organs. Yep, yep. Oh, this messed up. Uh, there is video of two female zookeepers that were chased around a gorilla enclosure oh at a gosh. Fort Worth zoo by a 34-year-old silverback. Uh, one zoo staffer can be seen desperately trying to outpace the silverback, chasing oh, her fast. TikTok clip. Uh, the angry gorilla knocks over a bit of food in his pursuit of the staffer who hides behind a door in the enclosure. Visitors at the Texas uh, facility recorded the women's attempts to flee. Uh, zoo patrons can be heard gasping and joining in and asking no, for divine no. intervention on the woman's behalf. No one's going to save you. Uh, the zoo said every day the zookeepers shift the gorilla troop into their indoor habitat so that keepers can place the animals lunch in their outdoor habitat. But that didn't happen that day due to keeper error. Steph entered the yard unaware that the silverback was still in its habitat. How many gorillas did you count? Uh, the what do you mean? No, I'm saying oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yes, yeah. I think it, three I think or four. It was, yeah, yeah, it's it's good. Uh, the presence of the staff uh, startled Elmo, the silverback. Uh, the zookeepers work with and train these animals every day. The zoo said, and thanks to their knowledge and expertise, they navigated the situation calmly and were able to exit the yard safely. Uh, the second staffer hid behind a tree as the gorilla eyed her and engaged in a standoff. Eventually, the gorilla backed down, and the second zookeeper is able to run to safety behind a closed door when the woman is hiding. I think by their nature, they're, yeah, unless they feel threatened, you know, like uh, my wife was, um, you know, out in, in uh, on a safari, and they encountered a whole bunch of gorillas. They were going to see the gorillas, and they were very gentle, but you have to assume a submissive position and let them have sex with you. Yep. Uh, Elmo had fathered a baby girl uh, born last month, by the way. Uh -huh. so he's a new daddy. 
Uh, in the UK, officers had stopped a BMW towing a suspected stolen, uh, it says caravan on Thursday. I think it means like a trailer. Or like a like a Dodge caravan? No, because uh, it, uh, well, I'll explain. Uh, they were staggered to find an 11-year-old child at the wheel. They received a call that a caravan had been stolen from a caravan holiday site uh, near Thirsk All and right. was being towed away by a black BMW. So when it says holiday site, I'm assuming they mean like a trailer of Yeah, sorts. we have a picture, but that's exactly what it is. In a statement, the four said, we were uh, able to track the BMW and was also uh, uh, that was also using cloned registration plates traveling south on the A1. 45 minutes after the caravan was reported stolen, we stopped the vehicle, but nothing prepared us for finding the schoolboy that sat at the wheel. He was 11 years old. A search of the car also revealed equipment typically used by suspects to carry out thefts and selection of vehicle registration plates. The boy was arrested on suspicion of a number of offenses, including theft, burglary, and motoring offenses. So he did it He did it all? I guess so. I think he was by Little himself. 11-year-old. Yeah, how about that? Hey. Uh, the rifle owners, I wonder what his SAT scores are. Pretty good. Uh, the rifle owners have been- Is there a felony portion? Updated that their caravan had indeed been found. That's wild. There you go. That is what I have in the 11. Zone. Yep. And that means we will take a quick break, come back in a second. We'll get our lesson question and give some stuff away for a correct answer. Uh, we'll get the trash and music news as well. So stay put. We'll return in just a moment. <laughs> Revivalist on 93.3 WMMR. Great song. It is uh, 19 minutes after 10. Wish I knew you. The name of that tune. Uh, Bluff Street today. Windy. You can see uh, the flag right outside of our studios. It's uh, standing stiff in the wind. And high temperature, 53 degrees. We see plenty of sunshine. It's just going to feel colder. A lot colder today. Yeah, it was uh, coming this morning when I stepped out. Because I knew the temperature wasn't that bad. But the, the wind made it cold. We had like three different little snow squalls that came through yes. our area yesterday. We had a, a, a sun squall. Yeah, uh, while the sun snowing. was out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, was, uh, it was weird. It looked like styrofoam. Uh, yeah. I, I thought we were done with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? But, you know, yeah. No, no, you know, we've had snow into April. Yeah, it's true. Which was weird. I didn't understand it because the temperatures were, fa- even though it was chilly yesterday, they were fairly high. I think it was because it was so windy and the wind chill made it cool made enough it to generate. Okay. Yeah. I guess so. Up in the, in the upper atmosphere and then it came down and next thing you know, we're like snowing, dude. <laughs> Uh, But next few days are looking really good. 65 tomorrow and uh, sunny skies. We're looking at uh, less gusty. It's still going to be a tad bit breezy, but not crazy windy like it is today. And then uh, Wednesday, 70 degrees. And then uh, Thursday, 73 degrees. Nice. uh, It'll be 85 in Florida where we are for spring. It'll be weird to wear shorts, Preston, for me. It (laughs) is. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're you're doing the uh, winter Winter shorts shorts guy. guy, But uh, no, I'm, I'm looking forward to exposing my pasty white legs. Oh, my God. And uh, enjoying the sunshine. It's going to yeah. be nice. All right. Today's lesson question. We are giving away a four-pack of tickets for the 25th annual Greater Philadelphia Boat Show. It's this weekend, by the way, 15th through the 17th, the Expo Center at Oaks. Uh, let's see if you listen during the traffic reports. What is my nickname for Notre Dame High School? <laughs> 215-263-WMMR. It's what I thought I heard Kathy say. What is my nickname for Notre Dame's high school? 215-263-WMMR. If you know, then you should call right now because we got that prize for you. The trash business is a gold mine. 93.3 WMMR with Preston and Steve's Hollywood Trash. And it is brought to you this morning by Natural Lawn of America. Natural Lawn has been creating green lawns quickly, more naturally, and with fewer weeds since 1987. Get free seeding every year. Call 800-FREE-SEED-NOW. What's going on, Steve? Well, Brittany Mahomes advising recent mothers to take care of their pelvic floor after she recently suffered a fractured back. Brittany advising intermittent mopping and waxing. Mm. I don't know what a pelvic floor is. <laughs> and Millie, Bib- Millie Bibby, I was going to say Bibby, Bibby Brown. I like that name. Millie Bobby Brown addressing fans who've noticed that her accent appears to change from time to time. Brown says, and I quote, those freaking cavones can chew on my nuts egg. <laughs> and finally, Chris... <laughs> Brown keeping his cool after a fender bender left his Lamborghini with a long scratch on the driver's side. Chris says he handles his anger better these days, but admits he does miss occasionally smacking a bitch up. And that's just oh my track. God. All right, thank you, Steve. Let's see if you know the answer to the question. 
Uh, what is my nickname for Notre Dame High School? 215-263-WMMR. We will go to James. Hi, James. Morning. Good morning. It Hi. is another damn high school. Another damn high school. Yeah. You got it. Hang on a second, Bob. We're going to set you up. We are going to give you... Uh, tickets for the 25th annual Greater Philadelphia Boat Show <laughs> this week on March 15th through the 17th at the Expo Center at Oaks. Visit phillyboatshow.com for details. Now, Preston and Steve's Music News on 93.3 WMMR. Yeah! Oh, boy. By the way, what, why do we call it Notre Dame in France and Notre Dame here in the U.S.? Uh, just Americans. Americanization, <laughs> Americanization yeah. of it. But even even though you you wouldn't say I'm going to see Notre Dame in Paris, you would say Notre Dame, right? Yes, you yeah. would. I yeah, would. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just checking on that. All right. Music news brought to you by A.D. Moyer Lumber, trusted expert since 1939. A.D. Moyer Lumber is your professional source for decks, windows, doors, kitchens, millwork, and more. Visit them on the web at A.D. Moyer. Dot com. Five Finger Death Punch announced a headlining U.S. tour this summer with support from Marilyn Manson and Slaughter <laughs> to Prevail. Uh, the tour will be kicking off at Hershey, Pennsylvania. Uh, they're going to be playing August 2nd in Hershey. Prior to that, Five, five Finger Death Punch uh, will be opening for Metallica and you're up in like a, Did I say tickets go on sale Friday? Uh, I don't believe so. Okay, well, they do. Better than Ezra. Dropped a new single. It's called Live a Little. How long has it been since they put out music? It is from their 10th studio album, and it has been, this is their first full-length record in 10 years. Okay, there you go. Uh, Singer-songwriter Kevin Griffin uh, commented about the new music and said, Now more than ever, we're aware that we're creating songs that could become part of the fabric of other people's lives, and it's something we appreciate in a much deeper way than we first started out. Uh, so Super Magic is the name of the new album, and that will be out, like I said, on May 3rd. Always like Better Than Ezra. Yeah, they're a good, solid band. <laughs> so what? <laughs> the Norm MacDonald joke. The Norm yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Thank you, Steve, for reading my brain. There's he, Norm MacDonald did a <laughs> joke on Weekend Update uh, 30 years ago, and uh, it was that uh, Bezra, Better Than Ezra topped the charts. Uh, second on the charts, Ezra. Ezra. Oh. <laughs> nice. Uh, Scorpion. It does, it does stand the test of yeah. time. Frontman Klaus Mein has is yeah. re recovering from a complex spinal surgery. It hurt. I uh, posted online that the band had to cancel their appearance at the uh, Viva Latino Festival in Mexico because of it. A uh, 75 year old singer wrote, "I 75. am making good progress with my rehab, but unfortunately, I have not recovered as expected. After and after talking with my medical team, I'm advised to a 12 hour flight time and performing at 2,000 meters altitude." Is a tough one for anybody, and I'm not well enough to travel and to give you the show that you deserve. Could you could you have even wrapped your mind around the concept of the Scorpions touring when like no. 75 years old? No, Scorpions are scheduled to return to uh, Vegas next month for a residency at Planet Hollywood uh, in celebration of the 40th anniversary of the album Love at First Sting. Revolutionary Women of the, uh, in Music Left of Center is the latest exhibit opened at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland. Uh, premiered on Thursday. Uh, the exhibit is dedicated to pioneering female artists from the mid-70s to the present day and features memorabilia, instruments, clothing, and other artifacts from Patti Smith, Bjork, Beyonce, Destiny's Child, Lady Gaga, Haley Williams of Paramore, uh, Janelle Monet, Lizzie Hale, Joan Jett, The Runaways, Meg White, and many more. Uh, Revolutionary Women also features three video sections documenting the artists saluted uh, in the exhibit. Uh, the Go-Go's Jane Weedlin, Garbage Shirley, Garbage's Shirley Manson, Lisa Loeb, and guitarist uh, Melina Moy appear at the opening, and or they appeared at the opening, I should say, and dedication of the exhibit. Uh, Suzanne Vega, whose 1986 single provided Revolutionary Women's subtitle, was on hand... Uh, the day before uh, to view it. So they're always opening up special exhibits like that yeah. that stick around for a while. And one of these days, right? We've been invited many yeah. times to go down and broadcast. Got to get there. A Jimmy Buffett video for University of Bourbon Street has been released. Uh, the track is from his final album, Equal Strain on All Parts, and features the legendary Preservation Hall jazz band. In the lyrics, he reminisces about his transformative years in New Orleans. Uh, highlights of the video includes clips uh, include clips of Jimmy, Jimmy, in, in, uh, 
in New Orleans from uh, the <laughs> 1970s to the present, I believe. Jimmy! And uh, as well as shots from the recording session. How about the cheeseburger? Yeah, come on, Jimmy. Jimmy! You know it. Jimmy! I do wonder if the Coral Reefer Band will continue without him. You know, like a, a, a Kenny Chesney or... Uh, somebody leading the, that band? I'm going to have to imagine, yes. I think that uh, the fans would definitely be up for it. But um, who who do you think is the likely... Well, the brand... You, by the way, the brand has gone beyond the man. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why a good argument for that to continue. Who would be that person? Or would I'm it be really a sure. collection of people? It might be a revolving group you know of of people that front it in different locations and they you know do the do the buffett tunes and and some of their own music yeah maybe. mac mcanelly is uh playing city winery in a few weeks is he really yeah. i don't know who yeah. that is he is kind of like the lead of the coral reefers he's a great guitarist Preston. Mm -hmm. you'd like him and, and so anytime there was a guitar solo that the coral reefers would play mac would be the one that, that would play it and he wrote a lot of the songs with jimmy okay jimmy are you talking about jimmy jimmy yep has anybody watched uh, Life uh, Life with Beth or the new Amy Schumer? Not the new season. Uh, uh, I've I've seen one or two of them. Yeah, Jimmy Buffett plays a, a little cameo in it. That's that's a nod, and it must have been while he was filming this, actually. Oh, okay. Jimmy <laughs> Buffett. All right, and then one last story. Uh, we mentioned this as part of the Word of the Week prize, but this uh, <laughs> concert uh, tour was announced over the weekend. Daryl Hall and Elvis Costello touring together as co-headliners this summer. Uh, they are hitting the road to June and July for a 22-city outing. And, of course, they're going to be playing The Man in our area. Uh, that will be on Wednesday, July 10th. And tickets uh, are on sale the 15th, so this Friday, <clears throat> at 10 a.m. It's a good bill. Both of them solid. I wonder, though, with the legal stuff that went on recently, if that uh, pretty much marks the end of Hall & Oates. As a touring entity? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Hall had done a series of recent tours with Todd Rundgren as the featured opening act. Uh, if those shows are any indication, it seems possible that both Hall and Costello may join their voices at some point during the night, which I'm sure they would, as the Hall and Rundgren tours feature the two together as part of the show. And Charlie Sexton's on the bill, Preston, it says here. That is correct. He has been prominently billing Charlie Sexton in the band. Uh, he's being backed by the Imposters, and Charlie Sexton is looking to be a semi-permanent sit-in second huh. guitarist. I remember that was the first song was Beat So Lonely, right? Wasn't that the uh, the hit he had? It's about the only song, yeah. yeah, hit he had. He was uh he was 16 years old when he did that. It's incredible. Yeah, he sounded a lot like David Bowie at the time and uh, he's a good guitar player too. That's the last item in music news. We will take a break. We'll come back in a second, wrap up the show, letter of the day for the word of the week prize. And uh, yeah, Pierre's got a special announcement that comes along with that. We'll be back in a second. Stay with us. 10.41 a.m. The Preston and Steve Show coming to an end for a Monday morning. What a big week we have. Lots of stuff to get to on our way to Florida. Spring training, clear water. And uh, Coco's in uh, North Clearwater Beach on uh, Friday. We broadcast in ball ballpark on Thursday and then broadcast from Coco's on uh, Friday. And we're hoping that uh, we'll see you. If you're not, you'll we'll hear about exactly. it all here. Exactly. The, the, the Mecca down there is amazing. And the amount of people from here that you will encounter down there, I hope you're going to get the opportunity. But we'll bring everything to you. Yep. And then maybe it'll give you an idea to plan a trip next year and join us for that event because it really is cool, especially when it's, I mean, the weather's going to be nice this week, but we, we've been down there when it's been cold here, and it's like, oh. Yeah. Nice. It does feel good. The yep. cool thing for Philly Sports Trip, who's uh, one of our big partners for this, is that they're already planning 2025 spring training. So, like, those guys get way out in front of it. I'm looking forward to hanging out with them on Thursday and Friday. And a lot of people that are going to be on the plane with us on Wednesday heading down uh, bought the trip, uh, the trips through Philly Sports Trip. They'll be at the game with us on Thursday, and then awesome. they'll be by the broadcast on Friday morning, too. So, it should nice. be cool. Uh, yeah, like a, a lot of stars aligning. I'm looking forward to it. Excellent. I would like to thank our guest this morning, Mr. T.J. Miller. Hey, hey, hey. T.J. Miller's new stand-up album is called Smooth Peanut Butter, and it is available now on uh, Apple, Spotify, Amazon, across all those platforms. And it was great catching up with him. He had a bunch of stuff to do, so we had short amount of time with him. And next time, he's going to be stopping by in the studio for sure to spend that. I mean, one day, he was just in the building, and, and he was like, can I go on the Preston and Steve show? <laughs> he left. Yeah, and then he came left, back. turned around, and came back. Yeah, yeah so we're buzzed. You know, like the old days when they'd panel, they'd come out, and you know Bob Hope would walk out from behind the curtain. So we'll uh, we'll get him back in here sometime in the near future. Pierre is here. Hey, man. Good day. 
Nice to see you. How was the weekend? Fine, thank you. How was yours? Uh, nice. Enjoyed a little snow yesterday, which Wasn't was kind of wild. It was weird. Yeah. Little yeah. spitting snow. And I yeah. go, what? I thought it might have been like a tree that when the flowers, <laughs> right. the wind hits the foot. But then I go, no, yeah. there's no flowers yet on the trees. Maybe somebody spilled some toxic chemicals. <laughs> no. Maybe that. Yeah. Um, and, and Marissa said it looked like styrofoam. Mm. Or someone said, Kathy said it looked like styrofoam. Um, but no, it was just little spits of snow um, mm -hmm. styrofoaming down on all of us. Yeah, yeah here we are. Back in. I made a snowman. <laughs> you did? <laughs> yes, that, I did. You had to really work quickly. I, I, I worked quickly, but it, I mean, it's seven and a half feet tall. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. I did that yesterday, and I dropped my phone in the toilet this morning. Oh, oh no. Oh, did you? Did you? Yeah. Um, I, I put it up on the ledge on the shower so I can listen to you, and then um, as I was getting out, I nudged it and it fell off and and I watched in slow motion horror oh, as it no. bounced once and then went right into the toilet clean toilet oh good I was right. gonna ask and then they're um, water resistant uh they are and I t took it out and um cleaned it and sprayed alcohol on it and um yeah. It sort of works, so we'll see. It sort of is good that's enough. The latest in adventures of the <laughs> perils of Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> the perils of Pierre. Yeah. I love that. There used to be a column called The Perils of Pauline mm -hmm. years ago in some newspaper, and so Kevin Gunn said, you need a new one called The Perils of Pierre. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> they made it into a movie. It could years be. Years ago, yes. It'd be a really strange movie. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's that. All right, why don't we do the letter of the day? Yes. Here we go. Preston and Steve on 93.3 WMMR. Now, the Daily Letter. And the Preston and Steve show brought to you today by The Letter. P as in peril. Perfect. All right, we have uh, a, a very cool concert ticket trifecta. It's a pair of tickets to see each of the following. The MMRBQ, September 21st, AFM Pavilion. Daryl Hall and Elvis Costello playing July 10th at the Man. And then mm. another band that you will want to see to be announced today at noon on Pierre's show. That's right. A special concert announcement coming at 12 noon. Uh, tickets, by the way, for the MMRBQ are on sale now, and uh, the other shows go on sale this Friday at 10 a.m. via Ticketmaster, WMMR.com to get all the information and another chance to win tickets for each of those shows, too, from what I understand. Um, what's happening on the program? Well, in addition to that special concert announcement at noon, we will get into a block of Pearl Jam. Uh, Jeff's birthday was yesterday, so we will celebrate that. Uh, we've got a request for a block of Boston, and it is 311, so it's 311 day, March 11th. We'll do a block of 311. Wonderful. All right, let me take this moment to thank our sponsors. President Steve Show is brought to you by... Duncan and the President and Steve Show runs on Duncan. Also brought to you by Natural Lawn of America. Get free seeding every year. Call 800 free seed now. And then finally, Acme Markets. Fresh foods, local flavors. Tomorrow should be a good day. Uh, an in-studio visit from our buddy Mark Summers. Yes, he's got his uh, his show. Yeah, so he we'll was talk just to him. on with somebody TV famous, big. <laughs> TV famous, big. Yeah. Fire okay. in the sky. The view? <laughs> huh? Are you talking about the view? Yeah, that was, was on it. The View. Yeah, yeah. yeah. TV, TV famous big, right, TV yeah. famous big, The View, uh, and also Joe Coy is going to be on the show. Joe Coy, too, so we'll spend some time with Joe and see what else we can get into. That's it. We're done. Rage on. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow, friend. Bye bye. Thank you.